Yellow. Oh, Bree, I'm standing right in front of the Hanover Fire Department providing you a really good look of this fire. And, and if you are looking up out over Colorado Springs, you should be able to see this to the south. It's blanketing a very large area. And we are seeing mutual aid come in from all areas close to this fire. Now, we have confirmed with Han Hanover Fire Department and the Fort Carson Public Information Office that this fire, which started um, in the south direction on the base, has spread 1,500 acres and has, in fact, gone off the base, threatening surrounding areas. Now, we're seeing several trailers come in and take out some of these animals, taking them to safety. Um, Humane Society has confirmed that for us. And just take a look at that, those, those, those smoke, those smoke plumes rising up over the area. And this wind surely is not making it easy to combat this fire. Now we are seeing more and more mutual aid pour in to fight this fire and hopefully battle it back and put it back under control. That's it for out here in the field. Back to you guys in the studio. Why don't you come back to my cage? I don't know how big it is, do you? The fire? Yeah. I, the, last, the last word I heard was 1,500 acres. Okay. Last John heard it was 1,500 acres. 1,500. You can go to my shot if you want for a live video. Thank you. Yeah. Ben wants to do a Facebook Live. Okay. Is it true it's a threatening home? We don't know. That's what Elaine told me. That's what Elaine told us, but we don't know. It's in a valley behind us. When when they're done with news, then we can do, we do whatever we want. Okay.
Or you're gonna take a slide, you're not gonna say anything. Give me the mic. Next to my camera, I gotta grab some. You put that, as long as that little thing in the middle is facing straight, that you're getting an accurate read. Does that make sense? Like that's the way the wind's coming. Turn it. 5.1, 8 8.6, 9.7, 11, 9, 12. So if we get surface winds are going to be lower than like right. the top of that flight point. Right. Hey, let me talk to Ben too. <laughs> you don't have to use that, but... Hey, will you hand it to me halfway through? Okay, we're live, we're streaming live right now, just so you know.
Those are back here. This guy's got some back. Start talking to your Facebook Live for about maybe 10 seconds and walk away. I'll start there and we'll go this way. Cool. All right, then we're ready. Oh, we're ready. You just tell me when we're live. Give me a countdown. All right. You're sitting live right now. We are standing out here in front of the Hanover Fire Department, and earlier you would have been able to see a giant cloud of smoke rising. There's still some smoke rising from over here, but it's moved off a little bit in this direction. Um, now, we have been seeing mutual aid arrive from several of the surrounding areas, sending in fire departments, um, sheriff's officers, and right now you're seeing trailers rolling in um, that are going to be evacuating some of the animals in the area, taking them to safety. Um, confirmed for us by the Humane Society. And we have just been seeing aid pour in. Now they have evacuated surrounding areas. And wind right now, just right here on the surface, wind is uh, right around three, six miles per hour, um, but a little bit, quite a bit higher higher up and we're receiving more mutual aid coming in to battle back this fire again smoke is starting to move a little bit a little bit this direction um, dying down a little bit but if you look up um, anywhere in Colorado Springs and you look up to the south you'll be able to see this smoke um, for Fort Carson area um, last word that we have received put this fire around 1500 acres and Hanover Fire Department along with Fort Carson confirming that the fire has moved off the base and that's why you're seeing all this mutual aid uh, pouring in to fight back that fire. going to stay here and wait.
Thank you. John, who are you in? Huh? You dialed in? No, no, no. My parents are in the other. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, five minutes, stand by. Yep. Midway Canyon? So what? what do they call this fire? Oh, it's, uh, hold on. I, I, I have the name if I can get in. Um, I think it's the, uh, the, 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 the Indian Village Ridge. Hold on. Hold on. Midway Canyon. Incident is called the Indian Village Fire. Oh, I've heard this morning. Do you guys know how far back this fire is? I have no is? idea. We, they, they, the command center is right there. I need, I need to know if they got my phone right out. I can hear you just fine. If who are you in our quarter? The fire. Opposed to the flood. I'm looking at our web story right now. Fort Carson said burning. And has, it says, well, the, the phrasing here is has moved off the mountain post. Um, actually, I'm on the phone with someone else. I can't call them. Would Fort Carson tweet this out? Yeah, they would. I'm going to finish it up. Hey, Kate. Kate. 
Is Sam over there trying to get info? I mean, it's not like we're pressed for space. Oh, here's the latest from Pueblo County Sheriff. 69 homes in Pueblo County being evacuated due to wildland fire on Fort Carson. I'm not even seeing a, a Twitter account for Fort Carson. That's all right. Don't worry about it. All right. Who I thought was asking was was Kate Singh was another producer that we used to have who's now in Denver. Oh, okay. that's why I'm not worried about it. Oh, okay. I just I didn't I didn't look until I was We're under one minute. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, stand over here, John. Here, stand this way a little bit. That way. Stop. Talk for like two, three seconds, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna walk this way. Yeah, just take one step out. Yeah, I don't. I'm going to normal programming with this News Five alert. If you do want to watch with stick with days of our lives you can turn to 5.2 but a fire has started on fort carson it is now spreading threatening homes in the midway ranch area yeah that's between colorado springs and pueblo there's a look right now that area affected hanover fire tells news 5 mandatory evacuations are in place and include high stakes view chaps view east to i-25 south to county line west to boca raton heights the evacuation route is indian village heights to i-25 and then uh, we should also tell you that uh, the elementary school, Prairie Heights Elementary School in the Hanover School District is evacuated and they are moving uh, students to the junior and senior high school as a precaution right now. There are 69 homes affected in this area that are being evacuated right now. Of course, you can see that large plume of smoke because of this fire. We've got crews from Fort Carson, Colorado Springs, Black Forest, Hanover, Falcon, and the Cimarron Hills Fire Departments. They are all working together to contain these flames. We do have multiple crews on scene. Let's go live to John McMichael with what you're seeing out there. John, what can you tell us? That's right. We are seeing all sorts of crews from surrounding areas come in and help battle back this blaze and a lot of onlookers looking as, um, at the, as this team effort works to battle back the fire. The, as you can see, this large smoke plume is still there. If you look up in the sky anywhere in the College Springs area, you'll be able to see this. And evacuations have started, and there are safe points set up. Um, you'll be seeing trailers rolling in um, as Humane Society attempts to evacuate several animals who may be in danger of this smoke um, as this high wind um, continues to stir up the fire in this area again uh, latest um, is 69 homes have been evacuated and crews from Fort Carson again College Springs Black Forest Hanover Falcon and Cimarron Hills fire departments are working to contain the flames along with several sheriff's offices and police officers who are helping to control traffic and help everything um, go smoothly with this operation that's it out in the field Reporting out here live, John and Michael, back to you on the studio. John, thanks. And we did get an update from the Pueblo County Sheriff's Office. They told us that so far 1,244 acres have burned. Again, this started on Fort Carson as a small fire about 10 o'clock this morning. Then, as those winds picked up and our weather team monitoring that all morning long, blew up around 11, pushed all of those flames to the east, jumped basically the perimeter line at Fort Carson where it goes on to private property. 
that's when those evacuation orders kicked in. And they are uh, evacuating animals as well. A big animal population in that area. Everyone told there is a large animal shelter set up at the Colorado State Fairgrounds. You can enter at Gate 6 near the horse stalls if you can get that message out. And you heard from John about the, uh, the heavy smoke. Obviously, you're seeing that all over. Folks from Pueblo, you can see that looking north. Folks in the Springs, folks out east, you can see the smoke. It's moving from uh, west to east. And again, there's a live look at that smoke plume. And again, and uh, we do want to let you know that there is a uh, air quality advisory that was established by the Colorado Department of Health this morning. Obviously, if you have respiratory issues, senior citizens, little kids, if you have issues with breathing, please stay indoors. Keep your windows and doors closed so you don't have to absorb as much as that smoke, particularly if in that plume area. Right now, we want to check in with Bill Fortune. He's on the phone with us. He's with the uh, local Red Cross. Bill, talk about the folks that are being moved and how your agency is uh, reacting right now. Well, as soon as we got the call, we started uh, rallying our troops to get down there to open up a, a uh, an evacuation center. Uh, you've been crawling that information on, and and people should know that they that's a great place to go to get out of the smoke, to get out of the wind. Um, and uh, we have people that are just starting to arrive. Uh, the shelter opened up officially around 12:30, and now uh, uh, so we have our teams in place, and we're ready to help. And again, just a reminder that. Uh, Folks are being moved to the junior and senior high school in the Hanover School District, correct? Uh, for the elementary school, that's correct. But for um, the homeowners, we are uh, moving them to our, show, our evacuation center, which is at the uh, Fountain Valley Baptist Church in Fountain. Okay. And again, have you seen uh, many people take advantage of uh, that opportunity? Well, they're just now starting to move in. Certainly a lot of people are uh, not at home and uh, are pro possibly at work, but... Um, uh, we're, we're starting to see people trickle in, um, and uh, we're going to have our PIO there pretty soon, so that will help you get some more information from All there. Right. Bill Fortune with the uh, Red Cross. Thanks for taking time to help folks out, as always. Appreciate it, Bill. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you. All right, and we've been talking about that air quality health advisory, and also we've under we've been under these red flag warnings for days. We're under one right now. Of course, you're not supposed to have any outdoor burning, anything that could spark a fire. Sam Schreier, in-studio meteorologist Sam Schreier, tell us the latest. Well, sure. First of all, you two, I do want to start with this. It's important. This smoke, if you're susceptible to it, will actually stick around more this evening. So this evening, when the winds die back, the warmth will separate from the ground and go up in the air. That is going to trap the smoke tonight closer to the ground. So if you're more susceptible to smoke with respiratory problems, you might actually have a harder time if you're out tonight and tomorrow morning. So just make sure your house is kind of nice and sealed up and you have your air filters turned on if you're in the affected area. Back to our Doppler radar. This is actually that fire. This is the smoke plume that's starting just south of Hinkle and running into our Doppler. Let me zoom in here. So one or two areas kind of strengthen up on Doppler. We might be getting that fire again. We saw it jumped over the interstate. We're getting that stronger reflectivity where the heavier smoke is really lofting up right over I-25. This fire is generally moving out to the east northeast. According to our radar, we're kind of following the smoke plume here. Let's also follow along with our winds. Currently, the wind speeds in Colorado Springs. At the moment, we actually lightened up the wind in Colorado Springs. For the last two hours, it was blowing at 30 to 32 miles per hour. Pueblo, you're now seeing a 25 mile per hour wind. So some good sign there that we've lacked, relaxed the wind a couple miles per hour, but it's not done yet. That's really a bit more wide view. I want to bring it in closer. Fort Carson sensor has been getting off and on wind data. Maybe the smoke is affecting it a little bit here. Fountain sensor, 17 miles per hour out of the northwest. West. Colorado Springs out of the northwest at 18 miles per hour. That tells us the steering of these winds are going to want to push the fire south and east, not directly east as much. This kind of wind will want to take it with this trajectory right down to and over the county line border. That's the current wind speeds. The gusts are still quite strong, people. 36 mile per hour gusts in Colorado Springs, 40 in Manitou, Fort Carson gusting around, the sensor again acting up right now, and that fountain gust are still up near 30, pushing to the south and east. Now, through the rest of the afternoon, the modeling is a little high at the moment here, but let's talk about it. Generally, in the 20s to 30s, through 1 o'clock, we get out towards 3 o'clock in the afternoon, two hours from now.
now, we're still blowing out of the west and northwest right to where the spire is at. So the most likely trajectory to 3 o'clock is still going to take it across the county line border out to the east-northeast. At 6 o'clock, the winds are still strong, but past 6 and 7, we start to lighten those winds up, especially after 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, we'll back down much more manageable. Again, Rob and Elizabeth, the way the atmosphere works, if you're very susceptible to smoke, it's more likely that this is going to get trapped at the surface through the overnight hours. So you're going to want to have an air filter on if you're really susceptible. That's just kind of something to think about through the course of the evening. Does the wind, as strong as it's blowing, have any impact on the ability to clear this out any uh, quicker? Or is it still going to have the same impact regardless of these wind gusts? Well, it's going to be the exact same here. They're already fighting it so hard because the wind's sweeping across. I think part of the reason it was able to jump the interstate is because right. that wind lofted up some of that debris, sent it out. Here's the other problem. The winds are still very strong in the rest of the viewing area. So while this is happening here on El Paso County, Pueblo County, there's no reason it can't happen elsewhere. Up until 7 o'clock, the winds will be that strong to really 6 to 7. So we're not out of the woods for the next several hours. All right, right. Sam, thanks. We just want to give you an, up, uh, an update. This is burning right on that Pueblo, El Paso County line. And as we've been, uh, there's a live look right there. It's kind of uh, popping in and out our live shot there. But again, evacuations in place in both parts of northern Pueblo County, southern El Paso County, 69 homes in that uh, midway area. We're also told about 100 uh, evacuations in the Pueblo County area. It's burned. Uh, uh, over 1,200 acres so far. We've got no uh, issue as far as, or no uh, information yet as far as containment is concerned. It's rapidly moving, and again, multiple agencies responding right now, and it is a, uh, it's a massive fire covering a lot of area that's bone dry. Again, we said it started on Fort Carson. Right. Uh, we don't know the exact cause, but as we've seen over these past several weeks with conditions, they have live training exercises there virtually every day. Mm -hmm. They're in the midst of a massive deployment. Right. Uh, these things can trigger fires. Generally, they contain them on post, but man, with the conditions we have today, it's a different story. Right, right. It's very ripe out there. So everyone needs to be careful. Do not spark anything out there. Right. Because, I mean, we can't emphasize that enough. And you see how many crews are out there fighting it with all these different departments. They're all trying to get a handle on this. Okay, uh, and we just want to let you know that uh, our crews are now going to have to move out of the area where they were. We were giving you uh, a great look at that the smoke and the, the advancement of that fire, but they're going to have to move now as this evacuation zone the expands. Evacuation zone expanding. Let's take a look. We have some viewer pictures that have come into our Facebook page, just more shots of the smoke plume that can be seen all around the area. And uh, don't see who that's from. Thank you all for sending in your pictures. As usual, we do appreciate you helping us tell the story. And again, crews from Fort Carson, Springs, Black Forest, Hanover, Falcon, Cimarron Hills, fire departments, all working to contain the flames. A large animal shelter has been set up at the Colorado State Fairgrounds for Midway Ranch residents that are being evacuated. All you have to do is enter gate six near the horse stalls. They will take care of your animals for you while these evacuations are underway. And we basically saw the same scenario pan out yesterday. You'll recall we had uh, two fires basically in the same area, a little further to the east as uh, firefighters from multiple crews were handling that uh, fire that was just south of Fountain. There was another one near Ellicott. The one uh, was sparked by a vehicle fire that then blew up and then the other fire uh, started. We uh, weren't sure how that fire, fire started, but one burned around 80 acres. The other burned around 170 acres. So these can quickly expand and even as, much as mitigation uh, efforts have been going on to try and prevent these mm -hmm. fires from really blowing up. This is out in the middle of uh, rangeland, and it easily spreads with the gusting winds that we've seen. Let's go to our live crew on the scene. John McMichael, he is still live out there, still in one place. So, John, tell us what's happening. Are they, are they moving you guys, or are you guys good? We are actually about to get moved to the Pikes Peak International Raceway as the wind continues to blow in this way. You see those smoke plumes um, continuing, and I we are about to get evacuated out and people are concerned as uh, re reporting so some houses are, are are going up in flames some people are worried about um, evacuations of their neighbors and their pets and we actually have to go we are being evacuated Pikes Peak International Raceway that's it out here in the field back to you on the studio Stay safe out there. Sam Schreier we did get some moisture I woke up yes. to snow this morning but obviously it's just not enough to help with this kind of 
Yes, Colorado Springs, the official rain total was one point or excuse me, 0 0.12 inches. We have about an inch down by fountain of snowfall. Uh, can you guys hear me on my mic? We're okay. All right. So smoke still blowing out of this system. But like Elizabeth said, we just had rain and snow last night. The problem is we didn't get enough. We're so dry. This didn't really soak into the ground enough. It didn't affect the vegetation. Let me get back into our Doppler. Now, typically we're using this to track rain and snow, right? Well, Doppler radar looks for something in the air. Typically it's a rain, but now this fire is big enough. It's seeing the smoke. You can see that trail spreading all the way out towards Highway 71, and then it still goes past that. Now we'll get a little bit closer. This started just off Millibury Reservation Boundary Road. You can still see some of the remnant flames sending up smoke there. But it kind of got a little stronger as it jumped towards I-25, and it did jump over the top. Now, I-25 is a pretty fantastic fire barrier. However, the winds are super gusty. As John just told us, you saw his hair was messed up. It was hard to hear him over the microphone. It lofted those particles up and over. This is a view of that fire here and the smoke. Back to our radar, we know it's blowing east across the interstate and southeast. That is the direction the fire is moving at the moment. During News 5 midday, we interviewed um, one of the PIOs and they told us that this fire can still be a little unpredictable. It may not follow the winds directly. Talking about the wind speeds. These will update generally once per hour. Hopefully the National Weather Service can push out some more updates here on the half hour. So right now we are still blowing at 18 miles per hour in the Springs at 25 miles per hour directly west out of Pueblo. Now this is down at noon. So just a little bit ago we had winds blowing at 32 miles per hour in the Springs and into the 30s in Pueblo. So there's some signs that we're getting just a bit of a break a little bit closer to the area. Fort Carson, 14 mile per hour winds out of the south and west, but they're much more directly out of the northwest through the area. Now, of course, that fire is really down by the border here. I'm going to scrunch down. This is the way it's going to flow, generally trying to move the wind in the direction of the fire. Or rather, the fire is moving in the direction of the wind. The gusts are still about as strong here, generally in the 30s, 36 miles per hour for Colorado Springs, and Fountain, 29. With wildfires here, when you get gusts over 25 to 30 miles per hour, that can help loft those flaming particles a little more. That's probably what helped it jump over the interstate. So when gusting is over 20 miles per hour, it's moving quicker. But again, it wants to loft up some of that dangerous and burning debris. Across the rest of the state, I'm showing this because look at how strong the winds are everywhere, all the way out to the border. This is a problem right now because we have the fire on the Colorado Springs, El Paso County Pueblo border, but it could easily happen elsewhere. We're keeping our eye on everything. The National Weather Service was actually able to pick this up on their new satellite that was launched into space. Forecast wind speeds will keep this pretty strong all the way up until six o'clock and after. Rob, Elizabeth. Sam, thank you very much. And we just got word from the El Paso County Sheriff that the evacuation zone in that midway area has been expanded. We want uh, to hear from Pueblo County Sheriff Kirk Taylor on the phone right now. Sheriff, thanks for joining us. What can you tell us about that expanded evacuation zone? Well, we're uh, doing our part down in Pueblo County. It looks like the winds are pushing it into the midway ranches that's, uh, that's uh, actually located a portion in El Paso and a portion in Pueblo. So. We're just completing our evacuation door to door on Midway Ranches. Um, we're waiting. <clears throat> we just got contact from Fort Carson, and so we're coordinating with them. Uh, we're doing an assessment to see if it's going to be feasible to do uh, uh, structure protection or not, depending on the severity of the winds and how fast the fire continues to move. Yeah, it seems that the uh, ability to get any kind of air support right now is minimized with the wind. Some helicopters from Fort Carson, we were told, were able to come in. But from your uh, perspective, uh, how many personnel from Pueblo County are now reacting right now? Give us an, an idea of manpower on the ground from your perspective. We've got about 30 uh, law enforcement deputies going door to door. Our SWAT team, STAT team are all going door to door up in our Midway ranches. And Pueblo County and they're tagging everything to make sure that everybody gets out safe. We have animal services that are staging right now and uh, we've got a few horses and llamas and alpacas and stuff to pack out of there. Um, the, you know, the good part and the bad part is that there's one entrance from Pueblo County and that's off exit 119. Um, so it's good, it has a tendency to possibly get bottlenecked there. But we'll work through those uh, those challenges as they come about. Does it appear that the threat is at least minimal at this point so you're able to get your men in there safely and women 
to be able to go door to door and get as many people and animals out of there at this point? Well, it's really licking around the edges of Midway Ranches right now, uh, depending on what fuel is is there uh, on the western edge of our Midway Ranches in Pueblo County. It could run rather quickly. Those are all mobile homes, so they're not. Um, they may or may not be defensible if that if that fire gets really raging. Right. Uh, so we want to make sure that we get everybody out um, and safe and to safety, so that we can do an assessment as to whether or not it's feasible to go ahead and do uh, structure protection on those facilities. You said you spoke with Fort Carson or in communication with them. How are you working in concert with them, at least as far as this evacuation process is concerned? Well, the evacuation is really a sole source. It's on our end of the of the spectrum. They don't have any homes that I know of that are threatened on the Fort Carson part. I know Hanover and El Paso County are working diligently just north of us to do the same thing we're doing. So uh, I think Fort Carson, you know, they're doing what they can. I, I understand they have some bulldozers working and trying to set up some lines. So the bad part is that it's headed east. It's headed towards us, um, and the wind is really pushing it uh, quite a bit so it really is going to have everything to do with what kind of fuel it's able to to pick up and uh, how defensible those homes are yeah they're moving uh, some of our personnel uh, back to uh, PPIR right now so I would assume that you're in contact with your personnel as far as the ability to uh, move them as quickly as possible out of harm's way if need be yeah, absolutely we're getting them out to the Red Cross to set up an evacuation site in Fountain at the Fountain Valley Baptist Church uh, for those affected by the fire if they choose to go there. Right now uh, we're just finishing up our evacuations and then we'll, uh, next thing we'll do is all our animals and stuff and then we'll, we'll get another size assessment uh, and coordinate with Fort Carson and Hanover and El Paso to see how we're gonna, how we're gonna put this little monster down. All right, uh, Sheriff Kirk Taylor from Pueblo County, we know you're a very busy man. We appreciate you taking on the time out to uh, speak with our viewers and with us no this problem. afternoon. Thanks, Kirk. All righty, take care, bye. Stay safe out there. Again, 69 homes have been evacuated. About 100 people are affected. They're working to get everyone out of the homes if they were home, working on getting their animals to safety as well. Uh, the Humane Society was sending a crew to help rescue those animals and bring them out in case no one's home. If you're just joining us, uh, Days of Our Lives, we uh, move that to our sub-channel 5.2. If you want to watch uh, Days of Our Lives, you can see it there. But uh, this is a extremely serious life and death scenario panning out right now. This is in the Midway area between Colorado Springs and Pueblo. Uh, dozens of homes and people are being evacuated right now as the Carson Midway fire has blown up from a small fire this morning that was burning on the mountain post. Uh, south down range and then obviously when the winds kicked up late this morning the fire blew up and then uh, went across uh, the perimeter of the Fort Carson property into the uh, Midway area that's what you're looking at right there basically it is a uh, an enclave of uh, mobile homes and uh, folks living there but as we heard from Bill Fortune with the Red Cross that's that expanded uh, evacuation zone right now. Yeah, El Paso County Sheriff saying that the northbound boundary is Donner Pass View. The southbound boundary is County Line Road. The east boundary is I-25. West boundary, Fort Carson Route 1. And you can see that Pikes Peak International Raceway is in this zone as well, as according to this map. So. Yeah, and, and, but essentially that's a pretty large facility, and right. it is it has a, a, a solid perimeter around it. So. Okay. Uh, if that's basically why they're moving the media and other personnel probably going to be the new um, uh, law enforcement staging area because it's it's pretty well enclosed the threat of that becoming a, uh, a fire uh, target is minimal because of its uh, massive size and again I would assume that if they choose to move uh, manpower to that location as well as the media, they're going to do a job of trying to keep that safe because that is obviously centrally, lo centrally located in that evacuation zone and it's just north of that location where you're seeing right there. But again, that's the, the fire zone right now. As we heard from Sam Schreier, the wind blowing mm -hmm. uh, pretty strong from uh, the northwest, meaning the fire is being pushed east and southeast. And as we heard from Sheriff Taylor, that essentially that uh, fire and the, uh, the fire protection is moving to the south, so they're taking precautions right now to get as many people uh, out of the way, out of harm's way there on the uh, the south end of Midway Ranch. And in this live look, you can see just people leaving the area right now. Our crew was set up here, but everyone uh, being told to leave this area now as well. As you can see, that dark plume just blowing 
it, ugh, just really, really bad out there. And, and the thing is that we have uh, been uh, experiencing these weather conditions here for the last uh, several weeks. Again, as you mentioned, we had a little bit of snow and rain mix last right. night, but that didn't even put a dent in anything. But the thing is, these crews are prepared to uh, react in a moment's notice. We've got, when these red flag warnings go up, everybody's on standby. As we said, there's what? Uh, eight, ten local agencies responding to this fire, and that's the way it's going to work. We're hoping, uh, against all hope, that you know this is the only major fire we see today, right. so that these guys can get a handle on it and basically allow these folks to go back home. But for the time being, they're bringing everything to bear right now to keep this thing from spreading. Again, most of it is open range. That's where the fire started on the uh, training grounds on Fort Carson. But there are all these uh, homes between. Uh, Colorado Springs and Pueblo in that Midway Ranch area. Yeah, you see how quickly this blew up and so many resources, up to 10 fire departments out there, as we said. So you don't want something else to spark elsewhere and then have uh, have to spread them thin all over the area because it, it, it is so dry out there and we are under that red flag warning. Meteorologist Sam Schreier. Yeah, absolutely. You too. If I'm getting tossed over to me, that smoke blowing pretty far. Now, what happens is it gets dispersed uh, as it goes up. Thank you both for doing the coverage here. We're tracking this again, starting right near Fort Carson and spreading that smoke all the way out across the plains. So if you live anywhere along this line east of the interstate, generally along and then north of Highway 50, the smoke might come and affect you. Let me get a little bit closer. Still seeing some large plumes right from just south of Wigwam over the county line, right along it as well, and then this moves out to the east. This is a good way for us to track just with our Doppler radar. That's how much smoke is there, where this is going. Again, being steered out to the east and southeast. Just as Rob has said, normally I-25, a fantastic barrier for fires. However, the gusts are strong enough. We think we've lofted those burning particulates over and then came back down and lit more things on. The wind speeds outside 18 in Colorado Springs, 18 miles per hour, 25 in Pueblo. But look at the rest of the area. Trinidad, be extra careful. Your winds are blowing at 31 miles per hour. Now back in a little bit closer. Let me get you more of a detailed look. Fort Carson, right now coming out of the south at 14 miles per hour. Blowing out of the northwest at Colorado Springs, blowing out of the northwest as well in Fountain. That tells us, and we're seeing it again with that smoke plume on our radar, that the smoke in the fire are being pushed off to the south and east, right at the border, and then south of it, out towards Pueblo County a little bit more directly. The gusts are still strong. We're talking over 20, over 30 miles per hour. 36 mile per hour gusts in the springs, near 30 in Fountain. When your gusts kick up over 20 miles per hour, that's more likely that you can loft some of that burning material up and get it to cross over things. I think that's one of the reasons why we were able to get this to spread over the interstate. Now, wind gusts across the rest of the state, still incredibly strong. Let me track this for you into the rest of the afternoon. The wind speeds at 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock, so two hours from now, rather an hour and a half since it's 126, are still out of the northwest in the springs, still out of the west in Pueblo, gusting to 30 or more miles per hour into 3 o'clock. Now out to 6 o'clock, we are still blowing, or 530 rather, around 10 to 20 or 30 miles per hour around the springs, probably still 20 to 30 miles per hour in Pueblo. It's not until 7 to 730 we start to relax the winds and it'll get better. And Robin Elizabeth, something I kind of kept talking about, if you're very sensitive to smoke, the way the atmosphere works is when the winds calm down, that warm air at the surface goes up and it traps any smoke underneath. I smell the Fort Carson smoke before when I come in for work in my morning shift. If you're up early or out late tonight and you're sensitive, you might just notice it more. So keep that in mind for the evening. All right, Sam, good stuff. Yes. Again, that, uh, air quality advisory is in effect right now mm -hmm. for uh, the area because of all the things that Sam just talked about. If you're just tuning in, again, we want to remind folks, if your family lives in the Midway Ranch area, uh, evacuation orders are underway basically for that entire area right now around 70 families uh, in southern El Paso County, northern Pueblo County. Also, uh, Prairie Heights Elementary School has been evacuated as a precaution. So if you have kids that attend there, they are being moved to the uh, Hanover Junior and Senior High School. Also, the folks who live in that Midway uh, area, they are being evacuated right now to the Fountain Valley Baptist Church. That's on 500 Alabama Avenue. And also, as we heard from Pueblo County Sheriff Kirk Taylor, 
all the animals are trying to move them out to the right. Pueblo County Fairgrounds and the State Fairgrounds. Yeah, the Humane Society going in trying to help rescue those animals as well if homeowners are at work or whatnot. Um, just a really bad afternoon. We right. these, we've been talking about this. Mm -hmm. We've been warning everyone. We, we Obviously, it was at Fort Carson, so they might have been doing a training exercise right. or something that sparked this. But it's so important to not flick a cigarette or do anything because it happens so quickly, and it blows up to more than 1,200 acres. As you heard from Sam, he said that I-25 obviously is working as a, a great barrier to uh, uh, keep the fire, hopefully, from jumping. But... We also want to let you know that traffic is still flowing northbound, southbound on I-25. Uh, obviously, it's slowing as the smoke blows across the interstate, but traffic, as far as we know, is still moving pretty well at this point. But again, once you get into that zone, it's going to slow down a lot of looky-loos because there's a lot right. of emergency vehicles. We also, you know, if you're uh, listening to this in a vehicle on your cell phone or what have you, again, please be cognizant of the emergency crews. There's a lot of them moving in and out of that area and also those evacuations that are going on right now from the Midway Ranch and as uh, the sheriff said, could be a bottleneck there as they try to move folks out of harm's way. And we actually have an evacuee on the phone live with us right now. Susan, are you there? Susan, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. Hi, it's Elizabeth Watson, Rob Cork. Thanks so much for calling in. Tell us what's what's happening with you this afternoon. Well, we have an acreage with horses and a calf and chickens, and the fire right now is west of us. And last report, I heard that it was at Armadillo and Indian Village Heights, headed northeast. And we kind of think it might miss us. But we're evacuating animals at this point anyway, just in case, because if the wind was to change any, then we would probably go up pretty quickly. And so we're just kind of loading up the van with, you know, some clothes and paperwork and trying to get animals out of here. We have quite a few chickens, probably not going to be able to get those out of here. Oh, yeah. But we have been moving horses and um, got a calf out of here and our larger stuff and then I've got the cats in the house and the dogs in the house and their crates in the van ready to put them in and um, we're just got hoses up by the house and sprayed the house down trying to you know keep stuff kind of wet around here hoping that if it does come this way at least maybe it might not you know take the house. How, so, far, uh, how far are you from the the actual large plume of smoke we're seeing live on our TV screen right now. How far away are you from um, that? It's pretty smoke here. I'm about a fourth of a mile off of the interstate at mile marker 117. And so it's, it's going over the interstate pretty good. And when you're outside, you, you know, you want to cough. It's getting pretty smoky over in this area. Are you seeing law enforcement go door to door? What message have you received? And are you uh, needing to get out of there as close as you are? I haven't seen any law enforcement going door to door, but I've gotten three calls on my phone from El Paso County Sheriff's Department telling us what's going on and that it's there and that they're doing evacuations and that if you think, you know, you are in harm's way to get out and get out now. So you don't, so you, you don't believe you're in harm's way right now? I don't know. You know, I think that it's probably going to bypass us a little bit, but if the wind were just to change a little bit, it's basically west of us. And um, so we're just getting stuff out of here and as fast as we can and loading up and, and going to leave, you know, and hope that it doesn't hit us, but I'm pretty sure there's quite a few places out there that have already burned. Are you seeing, the, are you seeing uh, your neighbors move? No, I guess I've been so busy doing my own stuff. You know, because I've got like five horses and a calf and chickens and dogs and cats that I haven't noticed anything with my neighbors. Good chance that they're at work and not even home. Um, so I haven't seen them doing anything. And the Humane Society was supposed to be out there helping um, families help rescue your animals. Hopefully they can help you with your chickens as well. We want to get you on your way. We appreciate you taking the time out to talk with us any final thoughts about just the scary situation that your family and your, your animals have been put in today yeah it's um, definitely an eye-opener i thought i was pretty prepared for emergencies but i figured out real quick that um, i'm not as prepared as i thought mm -hmm. and um 
I had a, a neighbor that's across the other side of the interstate um, knocked on my door this morning and said, what can I do? We got to get you out of here. Fire's behind you. It's coming. You know, and he was pretty panicky. And, you know, my first thought was, um, as far as the house and stuff, well, it's going to have to go. I'm not loading it. You know, I'm not risking my life to load everything up in the house to get out of here. I said, let's get the animals. Let's get the trailer hooked up on your pickup and, and let's get horses loaded and get them headed out of here. And uh, so he called his fiance, got her headed with another trailer, and we just started loading animals and getting them. We're taking them over to his place at this point. Okay. Um, if it were to jump the interstate, then we're going to have to do something. You know, we'll have to take them elsewhere. But at this point, he's taking them over to his farm. Okay. But and you know that the uh, state fairgrounds are accepting animals as well if you need that. All right. And all that's, right. Uh, well, we wish you idea. the very best. Please get your animals out of there safely, as many as you can, and you get out there safely, and we hope that this all ends well and that they can contain this fire. Once again, thank you so much for taking your busy time to talk with us. You're welcome, and my heart does go out for those people that are losing their homes right now. We are sending prayers. And we're uh, taking a live look there, and just in the last uh, minute and a half, two minutes, we've seen that fly fire in our live right. shot right there uh, blow up and you can see much uh, thicker, darker smoke now rising from the area. We were given some information that possibly the fire has now created another uh, spark location. We're trying to get that nailed down as far as uh, where that is in relation to the fire that's already burning. We also reserve, reserve, received word just now that uh, four helicopters are en route. We're not sure exactly where they're coming from, possibly Fort Carson, possibly from other area agencies to try and uh, make some water drops. We do see, uh, just as a matter of you know, making observations on our live shots, that the smoke is going straight up for the most part. Right. So that would at least tell us, and again, I, I don't know what the current wind speeds are, but it looks like it's not blowing the smoke completely sideways, so I would make the assumption that maybe uh, the winds have lessened to the point where they can now bring a little more air support, and if they can do that, we know that the fixed-wing aircraft couldn't go in. The, uh, the, the uh, helicopters can uh, fly a little closer to the ground, so obviously wouldn't be uh, affected by some of those uh, upper-level winds that Sam has been talking about mm -hmm. as far as being able to get in there and get some of the, the water down on that. And you've, you've done, you've covered a lot of these fires that you started to see the white smoke. I was like, oh, good, maybe they're starting to get hit. And then all of a sudden, right. just the black smoke starts pouring Right, and you know out. that more fuels of, uh, and possibly other things, not just uh, burning weeds or brush, but also I'm not sure what's in that area as far right. as uh, homes, as far as propane tanks, huge. A lot of those f homes in that uh, Midway area, they, uh, they work on propane. So there's a lot of uh, chemicals that might be in play here that could darken the smoke that we've seen just in the last couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of elements coming into play for those firefighters, a very dangerous situation. I did want to say, though, the one comment from our, our viewer there about, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize I really needed to, to have a plan. Well, we've heard this over and over and over again in all the fires we've covered. Please, it's another example of if you don't have a plan, make a plan because this can happen to you. It's not just your neighbor. Right. It can happen to you. So please, we say it over and over again, but we're serious about this. You need to be ready to move in a moment's notice. And again, we're seeing it right. today. And I want to talk more about that um, because I'm one of those people. Oh, yeah. I want to get my little plan. But we want to get to our live reporter, Sam Kramer. He is out in the field. Sam, a big plume of black smoke behind you right now. Yeah, Rob Elizabeth, sorry, it's kind of reception out here kind of shaky, but just take a look at this. This fire seems to have taken on another head. Uh, this fuel here, ample and ready to burn. We've talked about the drought conditions all along, but here, look at this thick black smoke. To me, that indicates that some sort of structure or structures are now, uh, you know, falling victim to the flames. They're actually firefighters and emergency personnel here on scene at the Hanover Fire Department Station 3. They've actually evacuated people from this space to the Pikes Peak International Raceway because, as you can see right now, the fire is coming this way. Now, I did speak with some firefighters earlier. Uh, over the radio, we could hear that four uh, helicopters from Fort Carson were coming in to drop water. To me, that indicates that winds here are a bit more favorable for air resources to fly and fly safely. But as you can hear probably at home, the wind here is still very active. And based on this plume of smoke uh, pushing to the east, 
it just gives you another indicator of just how much uh, the wind is really playing a factor here. We still see some people trying to evacuate as well as with some livestock. So this a very fluid, very active situation. Did try to speak with some of the Hanover firefighters that are here on scene. They're just too busy to talk to us right now. They're still trying to coordinate everything that's happening in terms of ev evacuations, firefighters trying to get into the right place to protect these homes and these people. So right now I'm going to send it back to you guys uh, in the studio. Sam, thank you. And we can see the, wow. Just the woman bringing her horse by. That smoke plume is huge in black right now. Very troubling. Jessica Barreto, our News 5 reporter, also live right now at Boca Chica. In the Heights, Boca Chica. in the Boca Chica Heights area in Fountain. That's where, where that fire, another... one of the fires broke out yesterday. Right. Jessica, what's happening where you are? That's... Right. Yeah, as you can see behind me, the plume of smoke is still pretty visible. Now, it has dissipated a little bit. Residents here have been working to evacuate as quickly as they can. You can see there's a property located right here. I did catch up with the people on that property. Of course, you know, the priority here is just... Well, it's jumping in and out, so if yeah. we can get a more stable situation, we can go back to her. But uh, just a reminder, she's a little bit uh, to the east of where that fire is burning. You can see it uh, behind her to the west. So obviously she's uh, out of harm's way right now. But again, as that wind continues to shift, as uh, Sam was telling us, it's like you never know which direction this is going to go. So everyone in that area, which has now expanded that evacuation area you right. spoke of earlier, the perimeters on that, it's like uh, everybody needs to be basically in pre-evac mode if you're not in evacuation mode right now, because as we heard from the viewer that called in, uh, this thing's moving, it's shifting. Right. We're not sure where it's going to go next. Well, let's go to meteorologist Sam Schreier for the latest. Are the winds changing? What can you tell us? Well, I can tell you guys what we're seeing on our Doppler and our wind, and our wind profiles, it will take me in a second, that it looks like it's out of the northwest on our profiles, but look at that smoke. It's something Rob just talked to me about. It almost looked like maybe it's taking a bit of a shift. Now, these winds will be westerly, but not necessarily the entire time. By the way, Rob mentioned they're going to be bringing some helicopters in. There's something called clear air turbulence that happens when you have a downsloping wind sometimes. So these helicopters might be flying into kind of a very bumpy ride, and these pilots are going to have to kind of take that into consideration and be very careful as they're going to fight this fire. Again, from that angle, it's hard to tell exactly where the smoke is moving. Perhaps it was getting a bit more south. The nice thing is we can generally still track this in our Doppler radar with imagery that is updated every few minutes here. So we're getting a very good look still at where the smoke is moving. Let me get a little bit closer. Uh, stretching back with that fire all the way still back towards Military Reservation Road and more of it blossoming just around the interstate. It is still keeping a general west or excuse me, east track winds blowing out of the rest and also moving a little bit southeast. That's good. The last thing we want is for it to try to move up to the north. Now, the winds later on will start to die down, but every model has supported that they will stay westerly, if not a little northwest, which is going to help blow this away from Falcon, away from Colorado Springs, keeping that track out east like it's going. We will stay on top of this. Doppler radar will be one of our best keys to track it, is our wind profiles update basically every half hour to hour. Colorado Springs. This is still showing a wind speed of 19 miles per hour, 25 miles per hour in Pueblo. Now they're blowing northwest again out of the springs. That's following that fire across the border. It's backing up what I'm seeing on my Doppler radar. The wind gusts are also incredibly strong. I'm just going a little long here so Rob and Elizabeth can get a couple drinks of water. 18 mile per hour winds over the spring, and we still have that wind blowing directly northwest out of Fountain, out of Fort Carson. The gusts, some of the strongest winds today, have been generally up into the 30s. 36 mile per hour winds over Colorado Springs. Uh, Fort Carson to Fountain, winds kind of out of the south a little bit at Fort Carson, but generally by Fountain, a bit more out of the north and west. If Fort Carson's wind sensor is bouncing around a little bit, it helps tell us that perhaps the wind could be changing some direction, but I think generally, Rob and Elizabeth, it will keep pushing to the north, or excuse me, out of the northwest to the east and southeast. Right, and we are seeing that from that live shot. By the way, mm -hmm. we had to move our cameraman from that vantage point. You saw right. that thick black oh. smoke pluming up and blowing to the south, as Sam was pointing out. So you got to get everybody out of harm's way. We saw a lot of people moving out of that live yes, shot. Yes, including all of the crews. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a reminder, if you were wanting to tune in to Days of Our Lives, we are showing that on 5.2 for you.
We do want to get back to our Jessica Beretta. We think we have her uh, signal issues figured out. She is live near Boca Chica Heights and in Fountain area. Jessica. That's right. Uh, smoke is still blowing pretty heavily east, and really there's no one left here. People have been evacuating just as fast as they can. As you can see, there's a property right off to my left here. I caught up with three women earlier. They were just trying to pack up their livestock, their chickens, rabbits, dogs, anything they could as quickly as they can. They were slightly panicked, but, you know, the priority here really is just to get out safely and as quickly as possible. And, of course, we're still tracking, you know, the activity out here. We can see sheriff's deputies off to the road and they're telling us you know if we see flames or anything uh, approaching us then we will then be forced to evacuate as well but for now we're gonna just stay out here and bring you the latest updates and uh, we're always watching out for you out here in El Paso County Jessica Barreto News 5. Jessica thank you and again those evacuation areas that were expanded the El Paso County Sheriff's Office saying the northbound boundary is Donner Pass View the southbound boundary, County Line Road, on the east, it's I-25. On the west, it's Fort Carson Route 1. So that is the evacuation area right now. We're hoping that all those homeowners can get out of their homes safely. We believe that's what those purple dots on the map signify. Those are all the homes because there are 69 being evacuated. And they do have a lot of animals in that area. We had our viewer on the phone, Susan. Right. She has horses, a calf, chickens, dogs and cats. They're trying to get all their animals to safety right now. Yeah, and again, we're not sure uh, how uh, quickly this is spreading, where that perimeter line for uh, the multiple agencies are right now. Obviously, what they try to do, we did hear earlier that Fort Carson is bringing in, or has had on scene for some time now, the heavy equipment, the uh, front end loaders, the, uh, the, uh, the tractor trailers, um, bulldozers, that's the word I'm trying to think mm -hmm. of, to try and build trench lines. Uh, in and around these fires as they provide some other kind of fire break. So we're not sure exactly where the uh, strike point is as far as uh, trying to establish a perimeter out in front. Essentially what they're doing is trying to analyze the wind speeds. The weather is absolutely the key here as to where it's moving, how quickly, what's in its path, and then they can strategically move crews in and around based on that information. And so, again, that's what's going on right now. It's a very uh, comprehensive uh, plan. But the other thing is that we've learned in uh, dealing with these massive fires in the past, Waldo Canyon, Black Forest, etc., that the process has really been streamlined, including uh, communication between all these different agencies that now have to work together and are all brought to bear in one location at the same time. They all have to establish new communication channels, which has been done. That was a big problem. Some of the uh, previous big fires we had that early on in Waldo Canyon, uh, the communication between agencies are on different channels, trying to coordinate who's doing what, where. Uh, that was streamlined a little bit. Then we got the Black Forest streamlined a little bit more. And then now, uh, you know, six years removed, five years removed respectively from those fires, the communication between these agencies uh, has improved vastly so they can get an upper hand, at least presumably, on these kinds of fires that are threatening homes. And this is a look from one of our Pueblo sky cams, a camera on top of a building in Pueblo. You can see just that massive plume of smoke, dark, dark smoke this afternoon. And moving. essentially everything you see from that camera location to the plume of smoke mm -hmm. is what basically this fire is eating up. It's that right. kind of terrain, although that's above, uh, obviously, homes in, uh, in, in the Pueblo area that's mm -hmm. looking north from our uh, Pueblo station. But again, uh, essentially, all the area around the Midway Ranch is uh, that dry grass, the brush, tumbleweeds, you know, some vegetation, uh, not as many trees, uh, obviously, as we'd see in Black Forest or other areas, but a lot of uh, mobile homes, as we've documented, uh, dotting the landscape there. And again, just gobbling that up because it's been so dry for so long and that precip we had last night. Nothing. 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 No. We need a lot, lot more. The Pueblo County Sheriff, uh, the latest numbers that we got were 1,200 acres, more than 1,200 acres, 69 homes evacuated, about 100 people. There is an evacuation center at the Fountain Valley Baptist Church. That's on Alabama Avenue in Fountain. And also those students at the Prairie Heights Elementary School, right. they have been evacuated just as a precaution. They're over at the junior senior high school right now. And again, we want to let those folks know who are just tuning in that we have moved days of our lives. You're just coming up to the top of the hour here in about 13 minutes. 
to 5.2, but we do want to stay on here because uh, it's critically important that we get information out both here on air. We're also streaming this, koaa.com, <coughs> excuse me, on our Facebook page and Twitter and uh, Instagram, all our different uh, venues because we want to get the information out to those folks who may be at work right now not uh, realizing that this situation is going on. We want to reinforce the fact that that large swath is being evacuated. And uh, again, we heard from the one lady who said, wow, it's really happening. I got to get a plan together right. to move. And we wanted to talk about that because we mention that all the time to have right. a go bag, have yeah. your clothes ready, um, and then know where your important documents are so you can just grab them quickly and go. And we always talk about that. Right. And we heard from some of the folks yesterday when the two fires broke out just to the east of that location, all of them saying, wow, this was my, my dream home. I'm not sure what's, what's going to happen. And we really hope that you'll take the information that we've given you about being prepared Right. very seriously even the most minimal stuff for you know uh, an overnight or a day at the most mm -hmm. because these crews are great at uh, containing these fires because they've been doing it for so long but again you really need to have a long-term plan in the back of your mind on paper talk to your family go through evacuation plans with your kids right. all that stuff matters and then the red cross can help with clothes and right. food and all of those essentials that you'll need but make sure you have your most important stuff ready to go in case something like this happens yeah and it's sad but it's one of those things we have to prepare for it is and yeah. we will continue to hammer that point as we continue to monitor the situation just to let you know uh, we had a camera position uh, a prime viewing spot as to where that fire was blowing up but our camera crews had to move out so obviously that fire was moving a little more south from that original location the media crews are being moved to pikes peak international raceway that's essential in the middle of that evacuation zone perhaps a little on the north end of that we gave you that perimeter of the evacuation but that's where they're moving now as a precaution because obviously they want to be able to get as many resources into that area without having to deal with anybody in between as right. quickly as possible. Right. We want to get out <coughs> of the way so that they have whatever space they need to fight this fire, get a hold on it and contain it so that no homes do burn. Yeah, know? and again, this is being fought from both El Paso County's perspective and Pueblo County's perspective. We spoke with Sheriff Kirk Taylor. He said, uh, said that uh, roughly 30 of his personnel, including SWAT, some of their specialized teams, they're going door to door in that evacuation area now, knocking on doors, making sure people are aware, making sure people are up and out, and they're also helping coordinate the movement of those uh, animals. Again, there's a look at that now expanded evacuation area. Again, it's in that Midway Ranch. It is the Carson Midway Fire. And again, uh, updates are coming through both the El Paso County Sheriff's Office Twitter page, which is EPC Sheriff, and also the Pueblo County Sheriff, PC Sheriff. So if you are uh, following Twitter, and uh, we are also re-posting uh, and retweeting that stuff. All right, we have Gretchen Presley with the Humane Society on the phone. Gretchen, thanks for joining us. Can you tell us what, what you guys are doing right now to help these families? Uh, so the Humane Society of the Pikes Peak Region is the manager of the Community Animal Response Team for the City of Colorado Springs and El Paso County, which means we activate during any emergency or disaster where animals are affected. So this includes wildfires. So for this specific fire, a team of our animal law enforcement officers from Colorado Springs and Pueblo have been dispatched, and under the direction of the staging commander, we're assisting with animal evacuations as needed. What's it looking like right now? Are you getting any numbers or are people taking advantage? Is there a lot of movement going on, do you know? Unfortunately, I don't have much information at this time. Our officers are very busy on scene, so we haven't gotten a lot of uh, details back. But um, again, they're very busy out there and they're just assisting wherever they can with any uh, animal evacuations. I know there is some livestock out there and our officers are specially trained to transport livestock and domestic animals safely. Yeah, I was wondering how difficult a process can that be to try and move a cow or right. a horse that isn't used to someone other than those who own them to get them out of harm's way? How does that work? Um, well, again, our officers are trained in livestock and domestic animals, and so they have a lot of experience with horses, for example. During the Black Forest Fire, um, they were able to take in over 600 pets and livestock that required evacuation from that area. And so what that consisted of was our officers would go in with trailers. They would work with the horses. They're very good at... Um, you know, dealing with animals that might be frightened, that might be um, trying to bolt, and they were able to get them safely into trailers, get them safely into containers, and then transport them to a safe area outside of the evacuation zone. Yeah, we remember. And uh, since then, and, you know, over the course of time, how is the process streamlined? How important is it 
to communicate with Pueblo and Colorado to bring the two agencies together to be able to make the process even more efficient. Well, fortunately, um, the Humane Society of the Pikes Peak Region operates both Pueblo Animal Services and our shelter here in Colorado Springs. So we're able to work together very well. It's just a matter of working with all the other agencies who have been wonderful as well, uh, just to make sure we know where we're supposed to be, we're helping out where we can be, and then um, just being on call for anything that our community needs. Do you right. have, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I have a question. So we had a viewer call in, Susan, and she was rounding up her horses, her calves, her chickens, um, her, her dogs and cats as well. Right. She had all kinds of animals, but she said that she wasn't going to be able to get all of them. Is that somewhere where you guys would step in, try to grab some of those chickens, or how does that work? Um, in, in past fires, such as the Black Forest Fire, we were able to go into the evacuation zone once um, families had evacuated and we were able to pick up their animals for them and bring them out to safety. Again, with this, because this has just started, I don't have a lot of information on exactly what we're doing out there other mm -hmm. than we're assisting with animal evacuations as needed and we'll be providing more information as we get it. Now, do you look uh, to take volunteers in different strategically located places across the Pikes Peak region to help when these emergencies arise, or how do you formulate your team? Um, so CART is an all-volunteer team dedicated to the safety and well-being of pets and livestock, and so we do have a dedicated group of volunteers that uh, we've already trained up. They've been to lots of courses. They, again, are well-versed in, um, in sheltering experience, proven ability to manage animal rescues. So, um, and then of course our, our officers, our animal law enforcement officers get the training they need to be able to rescue animals and livestock from dangerous situations. And so we'll be looking to our all-volunteer team um, if needed with this particular fire, if we need to set up any sheltering operations. And then you're escorted by law enforcement or firefighters into those zones as you move the uh, livestock? Um, I believe our animal law enforcement officers have the authority to be in there um, just as, as officers. Right. Okay. Uh, Gretchen Presley, thanks so much for taking time, and uh, keep us updated if you can as the Please. process moves forward. We appreciate you taking the time to uh, inform our that. viewers about the job, the great job that you guys do. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. We've been watching these uh, videos with our viewers, and you saw that giant plume just going up, and now we have this one where it's just stretched across the entire screen. Yeah, that's the uh, vantage point, I believe, where uh, Jessica Barreto was uh, wow. in the uh, Boca Chica Heights, and so you're looking back to the west and to the south there, and as you can see, that smoke is really thickened, and, uh, but again, it doesn't seem to be moving too fast, but again, it's very thick, so obviously a little more dense than some of that uh, earlier smoke that we've seen, so we're not sure what's burning right now. We haven't gotten any updates as far as uh, any homes being uh, burned or other types of things being burned, vehicles, etc. Although, as I had mentioned earlier, in that area it is a uh, uh, basically an enclave of mobile homes and other types of uh, uh, pre-constructed homes that are moved into that area. They each have their you know one or two acre properties. Some are larger, obviously, but again, a lot of propane tanks out there, a lot of uh, oils, and I mean. It can be a situation where there's a lot of flammable liquids, that was the words I was looking for, that could uh, spark that fire or be in harm's way. So obviously, the, the more quickly they can get folks evacuated, obviously uh, that'll lessen the threat to those folks who live there. And again, the evacuation area is Donner Pass View to County Line Road to I-25 and Fort Carson Route 1, that big uh, rectangle area right there. If you are just joining us with this Carson Midway fire, Let's go to meteorologist Sam Schreier. He's standing by with more on the conditions that these firefighters are facing. Sure, Robin Elizabeth, they're still working on my graphics. Look at how the smoke is being a little bit more vertical right there. Uh, maybe not quite as horizontal on that live shot. What that's telling me is kind of like what Robin had mentioned a little while ago. Perhaps the winds aren't always blowing as strong where that fire is. However, we've got our live reporters there. They've been saying, yes, the winds are still quite gusty. One of the best tools I have to track this is there's so much smoke. It's showing up on Doppler radar. How, Doppler radar. However, if you look here, starting to pick up a few breaks in the smoke. Now, the thicker the smoke, the more it's burning, the more it's lofting into the air. By the way, a heavier, hotter fire will loft more debris into the air. That's a stronger fire. If we're not seeing as much, it might be a little cue that, hey, maybe this fire is weakening just a little bit. Let me get in on our radar a little closer. So I still see some smoke showing up just where it started, Military Reservation Boundary Road to the interstate. But right here, we were seeing some pretty good smoke plumes, plumes and that's starting to weaken up. 
So the fire is clearly still burning. However, this might be maybe one of those signs that they are starting to get better containment on this. The big key is that it is still generally following the same direction. That's smoke blowing out to the east and southeast. Now, the winds in Pueblo are more directly out of the west. So is this fire maybe slide south a bit more? We could expect it to take more of a direct easterly direction, but with its current path, it hasn't changed too much here. The wind speeds, we now have a couple updates. Colorado Springs went up to being very strong, 26 miles per hour directly out of the west over the springs. Pueblo is also seeing a wind directly out of the west. Now that means in between, most likely out of the west, maybe a touch of a northwest component at times. I can get a little bit closer here. Let me show you what our sensors are picking up. Fort Carson, still not quite a fresh update out of the south at 14 miles per hour. Colorado Springs, due west across the winds. Manitou is still pulling a northwest wind, so that tells us that right next to the mountains, it's going to be a little variable with that wind, but we need to expect a west and northwest movement, which again will carry, like what our smoke was showing on radar, generally right along the county line, south of El Paso County, right towards northern Pueblo County. The wind gusts are still dangerous for this flash spread, or uh, excuse me, fast spreading flash fire. 39 miles per hour gusting out of the springs. Still gusting around 30 to 30, really 29 from Fort Carson to Pueblo. And what we're going to see across the rest of the state is continued strong winds. It's gusting everywhere on nearly every sensor at least 20 miles per hour, but most of them higher than that. Let me help you out with your forecast wind speeds. So as we go through the day, this is 4 o'clock. So now two hours from now, if you're not looking at the clock, it's 158, just about to be 159. At 4 o'clock, the winds are still generally out of the northwest to the west from Pueblo to Colorado Springs. Now, by 6 o'clock, we start to see the winds lighten up a little bit around the county line to Colorado Springs, but our best hope to really see the winds lighten is past 7 o'clock when this red flag warning starts to end. Just a couple of things to talk about before I send it back to Robin Elizabeth. If you're extra sensitive of smoke, as the winds die back tonight, we will get what's called an inversion. The warm air at the ground will settle up top in the sky, and it's going to want to trap the smoke closer to the ground. So if you live in Pueblo, if you live right on the county line to the south side of the springs, you might get a little bit more of that smoke if you're out extra early tomorrow morning or out late tonight. So if you're sensitive, keep that in mind. Run your air filter a little heavier tonight. Keep your windows closed. The winds will be strong again, Rob, tomorrow, blowing between about 5 to times 20, 25 miles per hour in the afternoon, which means Colorado Springs, El Paso County, probably back to seeing a red flag warning. This could happen again. It won't be as strong as today, though. That's some of the good news. And then I know Mike had mentioned uh, yesterday and previously <laughs> that maybe by Sunday into Monday we could possibly see some uh, moisture moving in. Yes, actually, some newer model runs that Mike's taking a look at right now were suggesting a better track and maybe a better chance of some rain possibly turning into snow. It would come kind of Sunday evening into Monday morning. That's the hope, even if it's not a ton of rain, every right. ounce helps. But one thing you guys have been talking about, we just got that rain we just got a touch of snow but it wasn't enough no. and the wind is so strong it dried anything out anyway so fire danger will continue all the way through next week as well all right sam thanks mm -hmm. and uh sadly we just got word from the hanover fire chief that uh there have been homes and structures multiple homes and structures destroyed by this fire in that evacuation zone in the midway ranch area also, uh, Rancho Colorado, that subdivision has been evacuated. That's part of the uh, Midway Ranches area as well. But again, this fast-moving uh, grass fire that began on Fort Carson about 10 o'clock this morning has now destroyed uh, multiple homes or structures, we are told, by the Hanover Fire Chief. So uh, this is serious business, yes. and these evacuations are being put into place uh, for a reason. And again, just looking at the live shots that we've been showing you, uh, we've had to move our photographers a couple of times because the fire continues to creep towards uh, where law enforcement, livestock, media were originally staged. They're having to move because uh, there doesn't seem to be any let up in the advancement of this grass fire. Mm, it's so sad to hear that and report that at this hour. We do have sound. Um, we did hear from an evacuee just a little bit ago. We want to hear what that person had to say. Try to get as much as possible out. Try to see if we can get our livestock, our animals out as fast as we can. 
That's really all we could really do right now. Oh, that is so heartbreaking. You know, uh, and sadly, we've seen that so many times yeah. that, uh, you know, these fires uh, come out of nowhere, spread so quickly, oh. and folks are scrambling to uh, try and get ahead of the fire and get out of harm's way. Our photojournalist, our chief photographer, in fact, Adam Napik, on the phone. You just got moved again, Adam. Uh, what have you been seeing as uh, you move to the east, I would assume? Adam, can you hear me? Adam Napik, can you hear us? Okay, we lost him. There's uh, cell phone issues uh, in and around that area. But again, our uh, camera crews have had to move a couple of times out of harm's way. They were originally uh, pretty close to that burn area. They were moved to Pikes Peak International uh, Raceway. Not sure exactly where they're having to move to now, but as you can see, just a massive haze now oh. as uh, that smoke and uh, debris continues to spread over that evacuation zone. And I was checking in on our Facebook Live. We have, uh, we're showing this, we're streaming this live on Facebook as well. And a lot of people are just saying prayers for all the fire officials, the police officers, everyone out there doing what they can to help. And we did hear that four helicopters were moving in. We can see one right there performing an airdrop. We're and it looks here. like it looks like one of the uh, Fort Carson choppers. I'm okay. not uh, yeah. up to speed on the uh, models, but that generally are the uh, the types that will come out of Butts Airfield, which is pretty close. But again, the whole key here to get that air support was what are the weather uh, conditions like? How hard were those gusts? How close to the ground can they get? And as you can see there, they're maneuvering around those power lines, which is also an issue. And also remember that even with just four. They have to uh, move in and out, in and away from uh, reservoirs to fill up those uh, containers that they're dropping that uh, water onto those spots. And again, this is all being coordinated. They have basically an air traffic controller that's also a part of the, the fire strategy. You have the team on the ground with your uh, hotshot crews and your other uh, fixed engines and firefighters, but also you have a specific air traffic control mechanism that is monitoring the weather in constant contact with Butts Airfield, obviously on Fort Carson, Colorado Springs uh, Airport, also Peterson Air Force Base, uh, Jefferson County. We usually get help from up there if need be. We were told the fixed wing aircraft weren't able to fly, but it looks like the wind has died a little bit there. Sam showed you that the, there was actually kind of a gap in that uh, smoke plume as it was moving east, but again, it looks like the smoke is kind of sitting there for a while, so obviously conditions have uh, ripened or improved a little bit for them to get those airdrops in, so that's good. Right. <coughs> the helicopter seemed to be super far away from where it's burning right now. What's, what's that all about? Uh, basically, what they want to do is get ahead of where they believe that the, the fire is going to move. As uh, we mentioned earlier, this is very strategic planning, very uh, complex about, okay, you have to make the best guess as to where the winds are blowing, where they're not only where they're blowing right now, but where they're going to be blowing a half an hour from now. Where, how is the wind going to shift? Where are they going to set up the perimeter line? How dangerous is it? Uh, how fast is the fire moving to be able to move manpower in there, get those bulldozers in to try and even uh, get a back line on some of this stuff? Because what you'll see is even in the areas that haven't been burned, they will go to uh, areas on the perimeter, either to the north, south, east, or west, determine uh, where it's safe to go in, maybe uh, use those bulldozers to uh, dig out fire lines to try and get a fire break in there. That's a big part of these uh, wildland uh, grass fires is to try to establish a perimeter maybe a mile or so away from where the primary fire is, build that line, and then if it continues to progress, at least they know they have some kind of fire break. We did talk about I-25 as a major barrier there, but again, they're trying to work a containment line within this evacuation zone, but they also have to think outside the box as to where's the, where's the, uh, the fire moving. They'll move that aircraft and that manpower to the appropriate location to try and uh, basically uh, protect structures. But again, it is about saving lives, so uh, that is particularly the strategy they're using right now. But the air traffic control is key to be able to coordinate not only how many aircraft, but the timing of the drops, how often, how available the water resource is. I know that on the training grounds on Fort Carson, they do have reservoirs uh, in different locations so that they, uh, you know, as far as 
the resources are there. I mean, Fort Carson is a massive operation. They have right. the manpower, they have the aircraft, they have all the bulldozers, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's there. It's just right. a matter of how quickly can you get it to where they need it and then make a break or get those aircrafts uh, regularly loading up with water and, and moving them to a strategic location. Right. They're doing the best they can out there. Yeah. Do, they're doing a lot of hard work. And Jessica Bretto, she's live out there in front of this massive smoke flume. Just up. Oh, did we just lose her? No. There she is. Jessica, hi. Hi, Elizabeth. Yes, uh, the smoke has dissipated a little bit here. We are on Boca Chica Heights near Fountain. But you can still see there's still a large plume of smoke behind me. And really, there's no one left in this area. There was a mandatory evacuation in place. I did speak to residents here as they were evacuating as quickly as possible, trying to move their animals, their property, their belongings. Just, you know, it was just a, a moment of panic for them. But of course, the priority here was to get out safely. And uh, we We'll have sound from one of those residents coming up in the newscast later on. And we're, of course, staying out here, continuing to track this activity. But as I mentioned, you know, uh, the smoke seems to be dissipating, at least on our end. And, of course, we'll stay out here and bring you the latest. Always watching out for you, El Paso County. Jessica Barreto, News 5. Back to you. Jessica, thank you. And if we can show that map again of the evacuation area that was expanded, um, Donner Pass View to County Line Road. I-25, Fort Carson, Route 1, all uh, the borders of all those homes, uh, 69 homes being evacuated. And we have learned in the past few minutes from the Hanover Fire Chief that multiple homes and structures have been lost with this fire. Now, you saw from Jessica's perspective that uh, the smoke was kind of dissipating uh, immediately in her uh, rear view. Uh, but then as our camera panned, uh, presumably to the south, you saw more smoke. And we have been told that there are essentially two different locations where fires are burning right now. That's the major fire that's going on right now in the Midway area. And Jessica is a little bit more to the north and a little more to the east. So it appears that that second fire might be directly due west from where she's at. And that doesn't seem as complex as this one. This is the major one that we've been monitoring from the get-go that has uh, been so destructive so far and it's in that Midway Ranch area and was blowing south and uh, southeast towards the Pueblo County border so they were implementing those evacuations on, not only in northern Pueblo County but southern El Paso County and again we've just seen some of the helicopter crews arrive mm -hmm. to try and make water drops as far as other air support we're not sure and I know a lot of times we have questions from folks about you know where are the big tankers Peterson Air Force Base is right there. We've got the super tanker at the Colorado Springs mm -hmm. uh, Airport. Just a reminder that, you know, it's a very, they have improved the process to get these larger aircraft off the ground in emergency situations because it was absolutely a nightmare mm -hmm. to get any kind of coordination when the Waldo Canyon fire broke out. I mean, it was one of the biggest complaints was this massive fire was destroying homes left and right and we couldn't get any of these C-130s and these other MAFs as they're called uh, from our next door neighbor at Just Peterson or from other, it was very frustrating. Yeah. I mean, they're going, we have these, it was all the governmental paperwork. It was, Ugh. you know, going through the chain of command. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that has improved since then. Also right. Black Forest went forward a little bit. We did get some massive air support there a little quicker too. But again, there is a process here Folks on the ground who are uh, running the show have to determine if, A, can they handle this situation with the uh, limited aircraft they have right now, the smaller aircraft. There's also some fixed-wing aircraft we should mention at the Fremont County Airport. They generally jump in, too. We haven't heard if they've been able to get off the ground yet either. But as far as these large tanker aircraft are concerned, again, not sure where that is in the, uh, the whole scheme of things, even though the military is involved in this firefighting operation. But again, that's always been kind of the X factor, depending on how many homes are threatened, how fast it's growing, how quickly can they establish uh, flights. But again, not sure what the process is as far as uh, getting aid from, you know, the, the 21st Space Wing out at Air Force or out at uh, Peterson Air Force Base to help out. So they're fighting it right now with those four helicopters. We were told, not sure if any fixed-wing aircraft, and those are basically you'll see those little jets that come in and they can drop the slurry, that reddish-orange mm -hmm. mixture, that fire retardant that they can drop 
on a line, and those smaller aircraft are basically uh, able to do very specific targeting on spots that they believe are going to uh, hit the leading edge of a fire and perhaps uh, protect homes. But again, we haven't got any word, any updates yet as far as where the vast majority of these crews are. It's about saving lives. It's about mm -hmm. protecting the lives of the firefighters and uh, structure protection. So again, uh, while this is going on, they're doing their work. We're trying to fill you in as to the process, uh, not necessarily the specific information as to where they're all positioned right now. And it's what, 10, 12 agencies are involved. And we, here are some more viewer pictures from our Facebook page. Thank you as always for sending in your perspectives of this breaking news. Again, 69 homes evacuated, more than 1,200 acres burned. And we just saw that live shot of the the charred area and the smoldering leading up to that giant plume of smoke. Um, this all started just a few hours ago. The Carson Midway fire broke out on Fort Carson. We've got crews from Fort Carson, Colorado Springs, Black Forest, Hanover, wow, Falcon. Wow. And Cimarron Hills Fire Departments, they're all working together to contain these flames, not to mention um, all the sheriff's offices, um, the Humane Society working to get people and animals safe in this destruction that moves so fast it grows so quickly and moves so fast yeah let's uh check back in with meteorologist sam schreier and again it looks like sam the, the weather conditions have improved to the point where they're bringing some aircraft some helicopters in anyway yes. so that's a good sign yeah one of the things i was most impressed about is how steady that helicopter was uh, with the strong winds some of the wind shear turbulence it would have had to be fighting over the fire and i was talking with rob about this a little earlier there was kind of that break in the smoke on our doppler radar but if you look it's kind of sparked back up that we're seeing more smoke so this isn't done yet. Now, as Rob was talking about a little earlier, is they're trying to get out as much as they can in front with those water drops because they want to try to cut this off to where it's going to go. With the system that's bringing our winds the way they are, we actually know pretty well that the winds are most likely to stay generally quite northwest and northwesterly. So this fire, basically what I'm saying, is most likely to stay on this track heading east, southeast, through a large portion of the day. Uh, on normal days, the winds would be a bit more mixed and variable over Colorado Springs. But actually, again, the way the system is, they're most likely to keep moving to the east and the southeast a little bit because that west wind is going to stay around. Now, wind speeds outside, 26 miles per hour in Colorado Springs. Pueblo is at 29. At about 12 o'clock, we were seeing wind speeds in both cities in the 30s. In the last hour, 1 o'clock, we had the winds jump down just a little bit, but now they've come back up. It's again, right near 30 miles per hour. And let me get a little bit closer to Colorado Springs. So directly out of the west in the middle of the city at 26 miles per hour. But as you get towards Fountain, it's blowing out of the west at about 10. And Fort Carson sensor has been wobbling a little bit, but it got an update and it's blowing due west at 20 miles per hour, which tells me that most likely down by the border of El Paso County and Pueblo County, we're seeing that westerly breeze uh, that should keep that smoke and that fire trying to propagate east. So for the fire officials fighting this, their best chance is to try to get out in front of it to the east, and that's likely where it is going to stay moving, generally out east following those winds. The gusts are still very strong. Near 40 in Colorado Springs, basically there, Fort Carson and Fountain gusting between 25 to 35 miles per hour, and that tells me that down to the border, we just don't have a sensor down there. It's still very much likely those speeds, either in the 20s, more likely though, into the 30s for those gusts, and that's going to want to loft any burning particles up into the air easily. So they're doing their best to fight this thing. The wind speeds across the rest of the area are still generally gusting between the 20s to the 30s into the lower 40s, which is what we want to see uh, a little bit, or excuse me, what we don't want to see going into the afternoon. Our forecast wind speeds, here's kind of where I was leading with this, from now until 4 o'clock. So it's 12, 16 right now, two hours from now, 4 o'clock. We'll still have the winds either out of the northwest to the west at 20 miles per hour. Pueblo, they're going to be blowing into the mid-20s. That means gusting is typically 10 miles per hour above that. At 4 o'clock, we'll still be seeing gusting around 30. Now, by 6, we start to back the winds down, especially around Colorado Springs to Pueblo into the teens and 20s. Again, typically think 10 miles per hour is where your gust is at. By 7 to 8 o'clock, the winds are back to single digits in the springs, Pueblo 11. Now, if the fire, Robin Elizabeth, is still going at about... 8 o'clock if it went that late, the winds would become a little bit more variable. 
Uh, they wouldn't be as directly out of the west and northwest, so they're really going to want to get this under the control as best they can through the rest of the afternoon, but it will be easier to fight it tonight as those winds back down. So I'll send it back to you guys. Just a quick reminder again is yeah. that tonight that smoke is going to want to stick close to the ground. That's what happens at night with smoke. Yeah, the wind is the key. Sam, thanks yes. for that. And again, that air quality warning basically is up for this entire area. So if you have uh, issues with breathing, uh, small ch children, elderly, difficulty, you know, if you have asthma, those types, types of things, close the doors, close the windows, mm -hmm. keep those filters going on the air that's circulating in your house. News Live's Bill Folsom is live now. Bill, what can, what can you tell us from where, you are, from where you're at? Well, let me set you up where we are. I've just been with my photographer, Adam, and we're in the area that is just east of where the fire is, Midway Ranch area over here where you can see the smoke blowing, and they have just pushed everybody out of that area as well. There had been a command post set up there, and they said you need to move away from here, so they moved us north up towards Pike Peak, Pikes Peak International Raceway is where the boundary is now for the evacuation. If you can see through the smoke, they, uh, there's a church over there, if people are familiar with the area, the Midway Ranch Church. The dump, when you come in El Paso County, that's where we are, right there at Midway Ranch. It is just uh, north of where the fire is burning. And you can see what Sam's been talking about. The wind is blowing it from the direction of Fort Carson and then over towards the freeway here. We are just a couple of miles. I'll warn you, we're going to have a truck drive in front of the camera here. Just, uh, it's not a flash, it lost the signal. It's just the people that are coming in and out. And that's Excel Energy checking on power lines. At any rate, if we come over towards Fort Carson, you can see there's some big black smoke, and that is what you do not want to see when there's a fire. That usually means that's some type of structure burning. White smoke is usually grass, and uh, that, uh, you know, we don't want to see anything burning. The grass is pushing it with this wind going on right now. But if you look in the front of that, you can see black smoke. And towards it, right in front of it, you see all these homes that are out here on these 5, 10, 15, and 20-acre lots where they can come out, have a little space have their animals out here but when you have a grass fire coming towards you blowing really quick it is a dangerous situation over here where we still have the white smoke and you can see over towards Fort Carson the distance that this fire has gone with this wind pushing it if we keep an eye on that area they may come back there are three helicopters they are Fort Carson helicopters that are coming in and doing water drops on that end of the fire so a lot going on here the people who are over in our area I had a moment a uh, minute ago, I was able to talk to a few of them. They're nervous about their homes. Uh, it sounds bad. They're nervous for their neighbors as they're watching it, but at the same time, there's also relief because they live kind of north and west of this fire, and as long as the wind's going the direction it is, their homes are okay. But they are sitting along roadsides out here on these dirt roads watching this fire and watching the wind. It's an interesting thing to watch, though, as we were talking about that wind. We're having a lull right now where we see and if you look at that smoke, it's kind of slowing down and starting to go up. But as soon as we start to see that, you think, oh, the wind is breaking. Then it picks up again, and we see a big gust, and it will push it. So in the direction it's going, not too far from I-25, there may be issues coming up. I have not heard of it yet where you may have smoke going across the freeway. Coming down, there are signs on the freeway warning people that there is a grass fire, a wildfire going on. People do need to be cautious. Be aware in the next while, if this wind keeps going this direction, it's going to be pushing towards I-25, which may create issues there. So if you've got something to do, get through that area now before it becomes a problem. We are waiting to hear from the people who are fighting this fire. I've talked to them momentarily, and they said they are so busy they can't stop to give us a whole lot of information. More important right now to protect these homes keep things safe uh, so we don't want to speculate on things but the fact that they are so busy that they cannot stop and, and give us an update on where this fire is going other than to say there are evacuations and people need to clear out uh, it tells you a lot just from hearing that and this is what we keep seeing right over here if we can go you see the white smoke and then suddenly you'll see a big black plume come behind it, it says that this fire is still dangerous right now people need to heed the warnings that are going on we're going to be out here following this for you, uh, kind of giving you some perspective. They're keeping us at a distance, and uh, everybody else should follow suit. Going in towards houses out here in the Midway Ranch area, uh, it is not a good situation. Back to you. Thanks. A couple of things I want to pick up on. Number one, uh, Sam did say we're going to see these sporadic gusts, so that uh, jives with what uh, Bill was saying. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, so far we haven't heard of any 
uh, issues related to travel north southbound on I-25, although we were told northbound traffic was going a little bit slower. And then finally, and the most devastating news that we've heard, there's another one of those airdrops going on right now, is that dark smoke that Bill is alluding to that, you know, that basically can mean anything, but mostly it can mean structures have burned. And we did get confirmation from the Hanover Fire Chief about 20 minutes ago that multiple homes and structures have been destroyed by that fire. And understandably, that's the only basic information we've received as far as uh, the devastation of this fire. The last count, it was 1,200 acres, but it's burning. Mm -hmm. We've been on the air for over an hour now, so you got to think that uh, right. dozens more acres have burned. But again, the bottom line is that uh, this is a destructive fire. Haven't heard of any uh, injuries. Look at that, just disappearing into the right. smoke, that helicopter. <clears throat> and again, the evacuation center is set up at the Fountain Valley Baptist Church. That's on 500 Alabama Avenue in Fountain. Um, the students in the Hanover School District um, at Prairie Heights Elementary School, they were taken to the junior senior high school as a precaution and their afternoon preschool was canceled as a result. 69 homes evacuated and we have learned that multiple homes and structures have been lost. I want to give you a heads up on a couple other options as far as uh, viewing. Obviously, we're bringing you our broadcast here on News 5 and our regular programming, by the way, has shifted to 5.2, our sub-channel. But a couple of uh, Twitter sites you might want to go to, Photo Juice News 5. That's Photo Juice, like it's spelled, Photo Juice News 5. He's got a different perspective. He is uh, tweeting uh, different information from his perspective, also giving you a different look, different angles from this uh, situation. And again, we're retweeting and following it on News 5 as well, also on our Facebook page. Uh, it's amazing how many different platforms we now have available, koaa.com, obviously to be able to give you uh, resources as, because there's a lot of information coming in from a lot of different mm -hmm. agencies that we aren't necessarily privy, privy to immediately, but we are turning that information around within seconds on our social media platform. So be sure to, if you haven't already, get the News 5 app, go to koaa.com, also follow us on Facebook and Twitter, because uh, that is where the uh, information from the El Paso County Sheriff, Pueblo County Sheriff, all these different uh, firefighting agencies. There's a look right there at. Uh, this is our photographer. Uh, photo uh, Juice, yeah. Yeah, we call him Juice. That's his interesting name. Patrick nickname. Godfrey. <laughs> his official name, Patrick Godfrey. Um, you can see his perspective is just the massive plume of smoke and, and just, how it changes colors. Right, exactly. I was just, just going to say. Just in a few minutes. It's transformed as uh, time's, time has gone by. But again, those initial evacuation orders went out uh, not too long after. This thing really blew up around uh, 11 o'clock into the midday hour because it just started out as a small fire, as they always do, mm -hmm. on, on the Fort Carson uh, training grounds. And then with those strong winds, it really kicked up. This thing moved fast, jumped the perimeter there at Fort Carson, and then started to move into that Midway Ranch area. And again, Fort Carson has been doing a lot of training. They're in the midst of this massive deployment to Kosovo and to Afghanistan, and they're training right up to the point. And we've pretty much on, um, if not a daily basis, every other day or every third day, been telling you, you see plumes of smoke that, but the fires have been contained on Fort Carson. Right. Their crews have been able to take care of it. This and is so, a whole different story. And they're allowed to keep with the sparks because they have the fire department there and yes, they have they this government training they, need, they have correct. to take care of. Okay. And they have all the, you know, construction equipment, soldiers. Right. That's what they do. That's they solve they do. problems. So, but anyway, this is different. They finally, uh, but these agencies that are around there, Hanover, Fountain, Security, Colorado Springs, Pueblo, they're always on standby as soon as a plume of smoke comes up on Fort Carson because this is the very scenario that uh, uh, they can envision happening and we are seeing it at its worst today. So again, they're prepared, sending all the resources from multiple agencies in, reacting as quickly as they can, but boy, trying to keep up with Mother Nature in these strong winds and these just bone dry conditions, it's been a battle. Let's go to News 5's Jessica Barreto. And Jessica, if you can hear me, I believe you um, interviewed an evacuee earlier. And it, it is so emotional for these folks that are having to leave their home, trying to get whatever they can out. It was incredibly emotional. I did catch up with three women who were at the property that you can see off to my left here. And uh, not all women didn't even live on the property. It's just a matter of neighbors coming together to, you know, in this moment of panic and uncertainty, just trying to help each other out. 
And, you know, as you can see, the smoke does seem to be dissipating here. But earlier we did see flames. And as I mentioned, you know, residents just trying to move as quickly as possible to evacuate. Now take a listen to one of those evacuees as she saw flames spark up behind her. Those are all the people I know. I know all those people that live there. It's, this is a small community and I just wish them all the best. They, like many, were forced to leave some of their animals and belongings behind. They were basically just able to take whatever they could fit into their vehicles. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, the smoke does seem to be dissipating here, but it doesn't necessarily mean we're in the clear. A sheriff's deputy did tell me, you know, this fire is a little bit unpredictable due to the wind conditions. So, of course, we'll just stay out here and continue to bring you the latest. Always watching out for you, El Paso County. Jessica Barreto, News 5. Back to you. Man, you can just hear the emotion. It's so sad. It's obviously a tight knit community there as well, and just a lot of. And then fear. you wonder how many people weren't home yeah, to be worked. able to gather what they need to get mm -hmm. out of that area so quickly. Obviously, you know she has empathy for all her neighbors, and yeah. it looks like she was a little bit north of that fire mm -hmm. zone. But boy, so many families in harm's way, and as we heard from the Hanover Fire Chief, uh, homes and other structures have been destroyed. It's a, uh, it's a tough day for the folks in that Midway Ranch area. Right, and a lot of prayers going out to them and, uh, of course, the fire officials and the law enforcement officers, everyone out on scene trying to help get a hold of this, con this uh, situation. Yeah, and those of us who have been through these massive fires, you know, we see these kinds of plumes of smoke and it, your, your, your stomach just turns and your heart drops because we've seen what these kinds of fires can do in such a, a short period of time and obviously the worst case scenario for a number of uh, homeowners in that Midway Ranch area, they're going to have to come home to pick up the pieces of what was left after that fire just blew through. And again, still don't know what actually caused the fire, but presumably since it was in the training area on Fort Carson, maybe a shell casing, one of those hot shell casings that may have ignited uh, grass. And then with the winds this morning, uh, again, questions might be raised about why are you training in these types of uh, red flag conditions? But they have a, uh, a bigger mission. They're headed to uh, Kosovo and Afghanistan, and uh, obviously that's what they do. So, uh, but anyway, I know that we'll get feedback from people about uh, why is that going on? Because we've also seen in previous years where folks out on the plains, it's red flag day, they're out burning anyway. Mm. And we're like, what are you doing? Don't what are you that. thinking? This is what can happen. This is the reality of precautions that are being put out there. These local uh, emergency first responders, they, they tell us not to do these things for a, for a reason because this is what can happen from any number of uh, sources of a spark. And another reminder that's just coming out <coughs> from El Paso County uh, and the uh, Pikes Peak Amateur Radio Operators Twitter page, people may want to fly their drones, take pictures, this is not the day to do that. This is not the time to do that. Um, do not fly drones in this area because it could ground the aircraft as well if these drones are out in the way. So just don't try to get out there and That do was a huge that. issue when they were fighting the wildfires in California. Remember right. that they actually had to back off right at the, 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 uh, the, the peak point because of, of some of drones. those fires because folks were putting their drones up trying to, you know, get a better peek at it. And it's like, hey, Let's let's think, people, right. about what we're doing <laughs> when these guys are putting their lives on the line mm -hmm. to try and save lives and property. So that's right. that's a great point. Yeah, keep those drones on the ground so that the um, firefighters and the helicopters can do their job. Also, Pueblo County Sheriff just sending out an update that residents can't do not forget to take your pets. Those large animals can be sheltered at the Colorado State Fairgrounds, so they are taking care of your animals for you in this situation. Um, our Sam Kramer is uh, standing, but we still have Sam. Can we go to uh, Sam Kramer out in the field? Sam, tell us where you are and uh, what's going on. Yeah, Rob Elizabeth, we're still outside the Hanover Fire Station 3, which is really the incident command post for all of this. And I'm just going to step out of the way here so you can take a look. This fire remains very active. 
What has been interesting to watch here is the change in winds. We, we've seen them steady blowing uh, to the east here, but to the direction of the east continues to change. We've seen it go northeast. We've seen it change to the southeast. And these big plumes of smoke are just blowing right along with that. Now, the, earlier today, there were a lot of people here evacuated, waiting to see you know, what was going on. They have also been sent out of here. So um, really, right now, it's only essential personnel. This command post is ready to change if the fire gets too close. And they would also head back towards Pikes Peak, uh, the International uh, Raceway. But yeah, right now, as we can see, the still very active. There still remains some black smoke, heavy plumes. Um, you know, firefighters have to be having a, a big, a hard time fighting this just because of the winds. You know, they're not going to put themselves in harm's way uh, if there's nothing to save. So, you know, we've seen a lot of black black smoke. We've talked to some people that have lost some of their ranches, um, but you know, there is some heavy fuels over there too. Garbage, trash, tires. So it's really too early to tell. Again, we did we didn't learn earlier that multiple structures have been burned but right now. We're hanging tight. If the incident command post does leave, we are going to leave with them, but we're going to hang out to see what things happen and see if they can talk to us as soon as they can. Rob and Elizabeth, we'll yeah, send it back to you. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, Sam, if you had an opportunity to speak with the chief. I know he briefly told us about the structure situation. Um, just in, have you been able to talk to any of the firefighters who have been going out direction. or coming back. Well, uh, Sam like can't hear us, us, I'm sorry. But again, that Sam Kramer is at that, uh, basically the command post for the Hanover Fire Department, uh, filling us in on his perspective. Remember when they were moving people out of there mm -hmm. about an hour ago, right. it looked like that plume and everything was coming at them and that's why they were moving them. All of a sudden, wind shifted again. Doesn't look as uh, harrowing as it did then. It's lightened up a little bit, but Again, still a very uh, dangerous situation. And there's some of those power lines you can see in the middle of a burned out field. So that's going to be another issue as from Bill Folsom's perspective, he saw the energy utility companies going down in there, double checking the, uh, the wires and the lines, et cetera, to see right. you know, what impact that might be having on the homes and, and other right businesses. There. Yeah. So I got to think, and we did see the one helicopter drop there near a power line. So I got to think that they're probably going to do their best to uh, try and protect that too, so communication lines can remain open. But again, we're in a cell phone age, so that's going to help. So uh, again, you can see there the the, the smoke uh, kind of stagnating a little bit. But just in Sam's live shot, you saw all that dust and debris blowing at the camera when he was giving the live shot. You can see those those gusts are. Uh, intermittent. And we have a note for everyone. The Hanover School District, the students at the Prairie Heights Elementary School that were evacuated, they are allowed to be picked up now at the high school. So if you have a student with Prairie Heights Elementary, they are at the high school waiting to be picked up by their parents and guardians for the day. And just a reminder also too that that uh, evacuation area for those folks in the Midway Ranch, uh, the Fountain Valley Baptist Church, uh, we had checked oh, half an hour or so ago. Uh, no one had, no one had uh, taken advantage yet. We have some new video, and uh, we want to show you just how extreme and how dangerous this situation is. That that's that's a first-hand look right now. That's confirming essentially what we're hearing from the Hanover Fire Chief. Look at the firefighters. They they yeah. there's nothing they can do. That that that's a dangerous and a deadly situation trying to create a defensive space around if we can just re-rack that and again they're at the whim of the weather as well as these flames it's just so hot and so dangerous and you also saw there's propane tanks in that area too right. possibly an explosive situation but you know, those firefighters we just feel for them too they, there's nothing they can do they're there to help right. protect but then when you see video like that you go what can they do it looks like the power yeah, poles right. online yeah, it looks like this uh, helicopter's going in to uh, drop something on that power pole, looks like. Wow. But again, you know, there's so many different elements. Uh, those larger uh, line structures, are, they're made out of heavy steel, so they're obviously uh, a little more fireproof right. than some of these uh, the smaller lines. Yeah, the old uh, <laughs> power poles. But again, boy, that, that video is devastating. You can see just, uh, I mean, they're mobile homes. They right. go up quickly. They, there's not much to... Uh, to stop those kinds of windblown flames from uh, keeping those homes from being destroyed. There's another live look. So as we were telling you, you saw that helicopter there fly off your screen to the right. We know of at least four helicopters from Fort Carson that are making airdrops right now. Uh, as far as other aerial support at this time, we're not sure. But uh, 
again, they're doing as best as they can given the win circumstances and they're picking their pockets to be able to get in there and try and create some type of line The Red Cross set up shelter at Fountain Valley Baptist Church on 500 West Alabama Avenue um, in Fountain. Volunteers are there providing support, food, snacks, whatever these evacuees may need to be comfortable um, during this time of uncertainty for so many of them. And again, time is of the essence here. With just four helicopters, that's not a lot of, and you can see how small, relatively speaking, from the, a wide angle camera shot those buckets are so they have to be refilled on a regular basis meantime the wind is blowing the way it is just how much water or other type of retardant can you get on these areas within a short period of time to be able to stem the flow but again look at that uh, you see almost like a moonscape there to the path uh, beyond where that pickup truck is there that the, the earth is just scorched but thankfully at least those homes right there look like they're in good shape. Again, that's that Hanover command post that Sam Kramer was uh, doing his live shot from but about an hour ago. It was just thick black smoke burning from there. And again, we saw the video of that those homes actually burning. It's just a, a, a terrible situation. We, we Our hearts go out to those folks today. Yes, they do. Again, it's called the Carson Midway Fire. It broke out um, around noon today or just a few hours ago. You can see another visual of the smoke Oh, just so bad out there. Again, that evacuation center, Fountain Valley Baptist Church. Students at Prairie Heights Elementary can be picked up at the high school now by their parents and guardians. 69 homes were evacuated. Multiple homes and structures have been destroyed. And again, these dry conditions we've had, even that snow uh, last night, the little snow and rain that we got, there's nothing that that could do to help us really, right? Meteorologist Sam Schreier. Sure, and if you want to keep that live shot up and put me over the top, let me point something out. If that's possible, we'll try that. If not, that's okay, we'll take graphics. But when that smoke, when that smoke is blowing as horizontal it is right at the surface, it tells us the winds are still pretty strong. It will pop me over the top of it. I'm just going to kind of point to it here in a couple seconds. We're still getting that configured. But the big thing is, again, when your winds are really strong at the surface, it blows it more horizontal, not as much up into the sky. Uh, as it gets away from the fire base a little bit more, that's when you kind of lift it a bit more vertical. So this view right here is just kind of perfect. What it tells us is the winds are still uh, very strong right at the surface. And it's just kind of a good view to take for a little bit more here. That smoke is still quite wide as well. Thank you, uh, Director Amy, for popping me up. So typically with a fire with lighter winds, you're gonna get more of that direct vertical lift right through the sky. But this fire is being blown pretty strongly horizontal. Again, that means, I'll step away from the wall a bit, pretty strong direct winds right across. And then as it starts to get away from the actual part that's burning, we get it to loft up a little bit more. So I'll stick on this for just another second, then we'll take graphics. Again, when you see some billowing in there that tells us maybe there's a little bit of turbulence, that's probably making it tough for these helicopters to get in there and fight this. Some of the most impressive things I've seen is that they were able to hover steady but I guarantee you, it's probably not fun for them to fly in there. It's probably bouncing that around quite a bit. So let's go ahead and take our graphics here. Amy, thank you, our director, very much for popping that up. And if she does get a chance, our traffic computer's up. Maybe at some point when I'm talking, if you want to pull that up, you're more than welcome. We'll kind of check on how I-25 is doing. So this fire is still generally showing up on our Doppler radar right around Hinkle, right on that Pueblo El Paso County line. The smoke is stretching all the way out from our Ray Dome over towards uh, the east. And I'm actually ready now for traffic because we've had it burning right over the same area. I kind of want to look and see how it's doing. Our traffic network is not picking up any northbound problems or southbound problems on I-25. Now, earlier it had been very slow up to the north. So despite the fact that we have that fire burning right around and over the interstate, traffic seems to be moving well. Um, my best suggestion would be obviously if you don't have to go in this area, 
I wouldn't try to give them a little extra time and room to work on it in case they need to evacuate people up and down the interstate a little bit quicker. But for now, things look good. We'll go back to graphics here whenever our director gets a chance. But thank you for showing that traffic. So a little bit closer to the smoke, it's still burning just about in the same spot, just west of the interstate, kind of east of Military Reservation Boundary Road and just along and east of Wigwam around Wigwam, excuse me, over I-25. The winds are moving east. They're blowing out of the west, taking that smoke east. The wind speeds are still currently 26 miles per hour in the springs, 29 over Pueblo. That means right over the county line, it's still generally in the mid to upper 20s. The actual gusts are even stronger. Now into Fountain and south, so right by where that fire is, south of Fountain and then out east towards the interstate a little bit, we're blowing probably still a little bit closer to that 20 or so mile per hour range. The gusting, I want to show this now, it's gusting near 40 in the springs, so right around the border. I'm sure it's between 30 to near at times, probably 40 miles per hour. Again, what we were seeing with that live shot was that smoke blowing horizontally across the ground and then lofting up a little bit as it got away from the fire. That's a key factor that yes, the winds are staying strong. Out across the rest of the area, the winds are still it's 245 here, people, still to 242, gusting over 30 miles per hour. Let me take you to the end of the day, then we'll go back to Rob and Elizabeth. 230 to 430. The winds are still generally out of the northwest in the west between about 20 to 40 miles per hour. Now, as we get towards 6 o'clock, we start to have them back down, but it's really 7 o'clock. We get back into the single digits over the springs, and then past that, it'll be a little breezy tonight but not as much as we've seen. Rob Lisbeth, I've said it a bunch of times, uh, the air quality will actually be a little bit worse, potentially at night, because the warm air will rise, trap the smoke down at the surface, especially as those winds lighten up, and they're trying to get this thing cleared up, but this wind is such a problem. I mean, look at the dust. Yeah. We had Sam's live shot, the smoke you too. This is gonna be very tough. By the way, it's full weather coverage. I'll switch off with Mike Daniels here in a little bit. Um, just a busy day. Yeah, right. Sam, thanks for your work. We appreciate it. Yes, we do. Yeah, you can see that. It looks like um, they're starting to pack up and leave that area. Yeah, that wind again has shifted right. back. It's coming at them again, like we saw an hour or so ago, and trucks are moving out again. Right. So, again, we're not sure exactly where the, the flames are, but folks are getting out of there in short order. Yeah, that's not good. Mm -mm. Bill Folsom standing by once again. Uh, Bill, set the stage where you're at. 20. What can you tell us? Yeah, we are just north, right on the evacuation line, north of the fire. We've got the wind at our back, and so it's going that way, keeping us at a safe distance right here. But we wanted to show you uh, just how far this fire has traveled. Uh, if you look, not here where you're seeing smoke in the helicopters, but clear over here. If you look close, you can see there's still smoke coming up there. And then it has traveled miles here, coming over where you have the helicopters. And then you come where that thick smoke is, and we actually have a, a crew over there kind of in front of that. We're here, and they may have to be pushed out fairly quick. We are by tracking out here what Sam is talking about. We have our own little altimeter out here tracking. You know, we see the wind die down, and it'll be three, four miles an hour, and the smoke starts to look better. But then, just as soon as you say that, we'll have gusts, and we've had a couple here going 26, 27 miles an hour. And that's when you see these weeds that are right in front of us here just start to lay down and you see that smoke, smoke basically lay down as well and it's pushing. We're seeing flames right now, um, right there in the center. If you can see, it's just coming over a ridge. A whole line of flames just came shooting over the ridge there. Uh, so you'll be able to see this fire spreading and just how quickly it comes over. And suddenly we're looking at the, the front of the fire pushing in towards those homes. And this is why they had that evacuation. They said it's coming this way. We are now seeing it here right now. Flames just coming over the ridge. That's behind those homes. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of action here to try and keep that and direct it uh, hopefully between homes and not towards structure. But uh, that's how quick this fire is changing. You're looking at the smoke and then suddenly you're seeing flames coming over a ridge. All it takes is those gusts. And if you look where those flames are, you can see how low the smoke is to the ground. The lower the smoke is to the ground, that is a bad sign. That means it is moving. And as um, what they prefer to see is they prefer to see a column going up. It gives them a fighting chance. That means that it's just it's standing still. This is what they call a collapse of the uh, the smoke plume. When you see the plume come from you know straight and narrow and then go down and lay down and become a haze across the whole area, that means it is collapsed and wind is pushing it. That is what firefighters do not want to see is a collapse, and that is you know, what we're seeing right now. We're also seeing that mix 
where you got the white, which is the grass, but when you got dark in there, you know, that may be trees, something else, but dark is, is not a good sign when you're in a firefight uh, or when you're looking at a fire coming towards your home. You don't want to see those dark plumes of smoke that's going on. So um, still, very bad situation out here. You, you saw the, that line of fire going there. When it's coming like that, moving that fast, you cannot put firefighters in front of that. All they can do is work from the side and try and narrow that together create a pinch point, I believe is what they call that. So they work from the sides trying to narrow it in because when you have flames, you know, we're a couple miles away and you can still kind of see those flames there. If we are seeing them from this distance, that means, you know, they're 10 feet in the air, if not more. Uh, that's a guess on my part, but uh, likely that big. You can't put firefighters in front of that. Uh, it's just too dangerous when it's moving the, that quickly. So again, they work from the sides. If they can, they'll get on both sides and they'll try and just narrow it down and then squeeze it together, kind of like into a funnel where perhaps they can pinch it off and stop its progress. So that is likely what's happening right now. Yeah, we're just hearing from our crew. Um, they've asked them to leave. They're in front of where they do not need to be. So we're going to continue tracking it from here for you. Um, but uh, yeah, moving people out, more people need to be moved out of the way of this fire as it's uh, approaching. And, uh, the direction we're looking right now, just to tell you that big building down there is a church and just to the right of it is actually the uh, fire department where those guys have been stationed, right in the thick of that smoke, the direction you're looking there. Um, there is a flag down there. If you can see the flag, I don't know um, what you're seeing, but uh, the flag is where the fire department is and that's where they're pushing people out. Anybody who's remaining, they want them to get out of the way. The flames are coming over the ridge right now. Boy, having a big is... gust right now, um, not what they want to see. We're going to continue tracking from this location and toss it back to you. All right, Bill, thanks. And, yeah, we saw just as that uh, flame, that uh, wall of flame started yeah. to move over that hedgerow there, that uh, fire trucks are going in there. And, again, obviously now it makes all the sense in the world that that was where those uh, helicopter drops are taking place, trying to head off that. Right. But, obviously, uh, not doing it because the, the wind is so... Uh, strong right now it and there's jump. so much uh, dry conditions mm -hmm. that it's just not enough air support there's just not enough air support our um, reporter Jessica Beretta who we heard from just a little bit ago in the Boca Chica Heights area she's being evacuated as well right now so they're having to move out of that area as well and we do have Brian on the phone Brian is an evacuee we're hearing Brian uh, you're live with Elizabeth and Rob right now can you hear us yes I can tell us what your experience has been this afternoon Oh, it was crazy. I came home from work, and um, the fire started on the backside behind my property and my neighbor's uh, uh, M&M trucking out here and Midway Roofer out here. We have plots together, and last year the fire went through the middle of those to my neighbor, the other four neighbors, and they saved that one. But this one, it came up the mid-valley, and as soon as I got home, I went to the backside, and all the Hanover fire went the wrong way, it looked like. They went to the far end down by Young Hollow, you know, where it's at now. And I was the only guy sitting back there on that lot, and that was just cooking these fence lines, and then it jumped to the houses. And then I seen all my neighbors and friends saving this house, so we went down there and tried to start saving it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> did, any of the, did you see any homes burn? Yeah, yeah the one next to us, totally engulfed. Uh, it had a big travel motor home, nice place. Uh, Two in the middle, we saved the neighbor and the other neighbor, and all of us uh, residents out there. There's about nine of us out there with shovels and buckets. Yeah. And then the fire guys came, but they didn't have no tankers, like always out here. For tankers, and finally the water tankers came, and then the helicopters came, and now you're seeing what the end of that is. But that was at 10:13 when I started calling you guys. Wow. So uh, without the tankers. Uh what are the crews doing? Just uh, trying to uh, dig uh, containment lines, or w yeah, what was the process there? They got little crews on each hot spot. Because I'm on a big bluff out here on my property, so yeah. now I can see everything. And, and there's one up there on the high hill of Quail. Then there's one in between yesterday's fire um, at the same exact point behind the school, to the right of the school. Is there is from that fire yesterday? Is there uh, any kind of uh, burned out gap? Uh, in there between where the flames are moving today and where that uh, burned out area is from yesterday that might uh, serve as a fire break? Mm, not really much because it all went um, southeast yesterday down that valley until they contained it. And then this time it came like the, the next valley, say. 
because it's like barrels of valleys and hills, you know? Yeah. So you're yeah. Straight, so are you safe right now? Where yeah. are you? Are you at your house? Yeah, I'm at my house on high stakes. Okay, so you're uh, further north of where the, the major uh, fire is burning right now? I'm exactly where the fire started this morning. To, ah, to okay. That. Are you in the evacuation zone or you're in a different area? I drove through it with my truck earlier, and then I went and got a truck and pulled a tractor out. We got a tractor stuck down there by the fire. El Paso County went down there with me and uh, the police sheriff, and uh, we dragged the tractor out, and then we all had to go. Yeah. You guys are seeing now. Yeah, we're seeing uh, trucks and trailers now moving pretty quickly out of that fire zone, but obviously that's something you experienced early on. How quickly did that fire blow up at 10 o'clock this morning? Um, from the point when I first seen the picture when I pulled up to my home and then I shot the pictures and called the guy. It took 20, 25 minutes. We're going to have... Within that says. point, it was all the way down to Young Hollow, which is quite a ways to my house. Yeah, we can really hear the uh, wind blowing in your cell phone right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, up against this uh, vehicle. Okay. But Brian, you are safe where you are right now. Yeah, all the homes on the back right side where it started, uh, it tried to swirl around, but the, the, once the copters came, the helicopters, they were dumping, and then they saved that whole little valley. And they, but they, you know, they couldn't save the next one because then it jumped right off the top of that ridge and just hit everything. How high was that wall of flame? Good four feet. Yeah. I had my truck, and I was, I was parked right next to it taking pictures, and then uh, it hit the old wood fencing that goes along Fort Carson, and once it hit that, it just ran it. <laughs> and obviously, you've seen this uh, two days in a row now. When you moved into that area or decided to work in that area, what concerns did you have? Did you ever foresee something like this happening? No. I, I <laughs> The only time I've gotten scared was the time it came through our valley, and then this time because it was super close and we have no water here. In the middle, they didn't pipe this water. We, we're on a cistern. We haul in our water. Yeah, we've uh, we've uh, heard issues as far as uh, fire containment and control and the water issues before from folks who live there as well as the agencies themselves. Obviously, they have to uh, figure out a system to be able to supply what they can when they can. But on a day like today, boy, they've really had to bring multiple agencies to bear. Uh, Brian, we want you to stay safe yes. and uh, please. Oh, man, it's turning around. It's blowing back this way now, like two streets over, call it, maybe two streets. Are like you seeing flames? Are you seeing flames again? Because if you are, let's get out of there. Uh, no flames yet, but I, it's, it must got a house on this other side of my hill because it's totally black now. Oh, yeah. man. Um, if but, you're in that evacuation area and if you're feeling threatened, do you need to get out now? No, I, I, I I'm fine. And I told them I won't leave. They, they're not taking me away. I won't leave my property. Well, you were, uh, uh, <laughs> the effort by you and your, your neighbors uh, exemplify the, uh, the courage and character of those folks that live down there. It's just so sad once again to see uh, the damage that these wildfires do. Please, uh, Brian, stay safe yes. and uh, stay out of harm's way. And we appreciate you taking time to uh, talk with us here this afternoon. Sure. All right. Okay, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And well, we, he's. Yeah. I mean, you can understand someone wanting to stay and protect their house when there are so many crews elsewhere having right. to do other things. But at of some course, point, we have to urge everyone to follow these evacuation orders and get out, get your necessary items, your pets, your loved ones, and leave. And that video that we showed you earlier of actually the flames consuming a mobile home. Uh, or a, a, a structure now. Yeah, let's uh, roll that video in that video You see there's nothing even the firefighters can do right. and they're prepared and with right. the conditions as they are There's the crew right there on the left side of your screen uh, there, There's nothing they can do So to those people like Brian God love you trying to help and put these fires out boy when it gets that severe there's nothing you can do, even the experts. So please right. heed those evacuation warnings. It is so sad to see these structures and homes lost, but thankfully we haven't heard anything about any injuries or lives lost. And right. that, at the end of the day, is the most important thing because everything else can be replaced. We can't replace lives, and we've right. seen uh, the deadly consequences of fires, Waldo Canyon, Black Forest, etc in uh, past years so please heed those evacuation right. warnings and, and that can hurt their efforts as well when they're trying that's to, true when people are staying home and they're trying to prevent these homes from burning but now they're having to focus on getting you out when you could have left on your own sorry don't want to preach here but if they're telling you to leave you should leave
Brian, no, and, thank and, you and, for talking and, uh, with us. The gal us, we but... spoke with a couple of hours ago, right. she was just determined to keep doing whatever it was right. she could do to get her animals together and all that kind of stuff. But we were like, she was saying the flames were a quarter mile away. Yeah. That's close. I mean, right. it may sound like a, a, lar a long distance, but it's not. We and given the intensity of these winds can overtake. And we just saw the, the fire shift from the Hanover uh, command yeah. post where Sam was, was no problem, generally speaking. And then within five minutes, boom, wind shifted. Everything that came right back at them, and they're yeah. all now moving out of right. there. Right, and Brian just said, he was like, oh, no, it's over there. Uh-oh, it looks like it's turning back this way now. Right. And we see more people moving out of that evac zone now in that last live shot we saw with right. uh, Bill Folsom. So, again, can't emphasize enough that evacuation zone had expanded here in the last a couple hours, essentially, from the Pueblo County line north uh, is the, uh, the X uh, zone there where uh, the border for that evacuation area is right now. Can and we it, show uh, that map again? It's a uh, very large uh, area, and again, the perimeter of that has expanded right. to I-25 on the east, Fort Carson on the west. Donner County Pass. County line County south, line. I believe, yeah, Donner. So, well, uh, that probably has expanded as we're seeing more well, people Well, it looks like moved, the, so. the fire continues to push east, so and we'll, we'll uh, continue to monitor that. And that's the thing, and we're trying to get the very latest from officials, but they're off, <laughs> they're obviously have their hands full right now, so we're just using the latest information that we do have Right. as far as the 1,200 acres as well. That's our latest number. On and that was uh, at 1 o'clock we right. went on the air, so obviously just we saw live how these flames just continue to eat up acreage so it has to be much more than just 1200 acres at this point but again as we heard from the Hanover fire chief uh, multiple structures have uh, been destroyed or damaged and uh, homes as well people's lives have changed today uh, from just mm -hmm. 10 o'clock this morning 8 o'clock left for work everything's okay they get home tonight changed. at 5 and, and everything's gone and our hearts go out to them but please know you're still safe you're alive that's the most important yes. thing and remember there are resources available. We heard from the Red Cross. Uh, they are here to help you along with the other uh, first responders in your, in your town, in your county, the Hanover area, Midway, Pueblo County, El Paso County. They're all working together to try and uh, do the best they can to A, control the fire, contain it. But also, this is a story that's continuing to build in the days ahead as folks try to recover. And we did have students evacuated as we told you about with the Hanover School District and we do have the superintendent on the phone, Dr. Grant Schmidt. Dr. Schmidt, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Tell us how things went for, for your students and teachers and administrators this afternoon. Well, we only evacuated our elementary school, which is located in Midway, over to the junior senior high school. So the school has not, the district is open. We do have students at our junior senior high school. But of course, as you can imagine, uh, since we do have staff members who live in the area and students were able to easily see smoke, uh, folks were a little nervous. We had a few kids who were uh, crying, but we have folks feeling more comforted now and parents have already started picking up some of our kids. Has the uh, fire moved away from the elementary school since that evacuation went out? When we did the precaution evacuation on our own, it was the fire was actually not moving towards the elementary school. We just didn't want to be moving right. at the last minute. The wind has since shifted. It is south of the school, but it, it did move eastward and also a little northward. Uh, and it looks like your crews are actually showing footage from the parking lot of the elementary school. So it is still... Uh, still fine. Okay. And, and the uh, the students and teachers they go through fire drills, correct? They're they're uh, advised uh, periodically about what they need to do on a day like today. We do do regular fire drills, but in this case, it fell under the category of an evacuation drill. Mm -hmm. And so the elementary school uh, students and staff did a tremendous job evacuating our students uh, and and getting them out of harm's way. How many are you talking about there in the school at particular on a particular day? At the elementary school, we can have as many as 130 students. Okay. And again, obviously their lives are impacted by this, not just from the evacuation, but as you mentioned, uh, students or staff may live in that area. Boy, mm -hmm. it's, it's a tough day. And uh, as far as parents who may be just tuning in, uh, did you send out like text alerts or notifications to parents to give them a timeline as to when they could come get their children? At the time of evacuation, we sent out text alerts as well as phone calls and posting on our next door application for the neighborhood and we have continued to do the reverse uh, text messages to keep them informed of what's happening 
and uh, they can at any time or at the end of the school day come and pick up their kids. We are also prepared for the fact that some students, their families may be doing the evacuation and will not be able to pick up their kids on time, that, that we will be prepared with our local food pantry to provide dinner and, and keep them safe here and oh. their families can come. That's good to know. Yes. Yes. Um, is there something you would like to say to uh, families in the district if maybe they're not aware of how the process works or something they need to do now in the event that this happens again as far as signing up for text alerts or what's their best option if they encounter this scenario moving forward? The best option is at the time of enrollment and then at any time update the school where their students attend with their phone numbers as well as any cell phones that they have so that we can make sure we communicate with you. That's the best way we can do that. Great. Uh, well, we appreciate you uh, taking time to fill in our uh, viewers. Great right. that all the kids are safe. Again, a uh, tough firefight continues right now. We've seen uh, a couple of more. I saw a Chinook helicopter now is involved in that, and so it looks like they've kind of ramped up the helicopter strikes, but that was that area that uh, Bill was telling us about. Looks like they've really concentrated the mm -hmm. airdrops there on the uh, the leading edge of that fire. We don't see the flames that we saw 20 minutes ago. That's not to say it's not a threat. Saw a lot of people moving out of there, but it looks like kind of the focus has shifted to that front edge of the fire. So uh, good to see that a lot of air support now being focused on that area where the uh, uh, those homes we saw that were still untouched, but the fire was moving towards them. Right. Lead I do know that Daniels. the firefighters were creating a fire line uh, east of where the fire was by doing controlled burn so that the fire couldn't spread much further east. And um, so it sounds like they must be concentrating on the center of that fire, and they do have a control line out there. So hopefully we won't be uh, in danger much longer. Oh, okay, so they actually were uh, conducting control burns today in advance of that. No, they were doing it once the fire began. Gotcha. So that they were pretty quick to try and get a handle on where it was moving and et cetera. But, yeah, that's a standard firefighting procedure. Thank you so much for joining us. We yes, really appreciate you. it. It's just in from Springs Communications, uh, Springs Police and Fire Communications Center. They're fighting a fire now. Smoke visible from a distance. This is in the area of Barnes and Peterson. So that's happening now as well and again that fire danger is high mm -hmm. any uh, flicked cigarette can start something ignite something huge let's go to lead forecaster mike daniels he joins us now thanks guys as we know all too well wind is the key player in driving these fires here across southeastern colorado and the wind is just screaming right now out of the northwest in the springs gusting up to 44 Fort Carson up to 32 and Fountain out of the northwest at 28. What that does is push that fire very quickly to the south and east. You can see even as far south as Pueblo, very strong wind out of the west right now. That's not sustained. Those are peak gusts at 48 miles per hour and also relative humidity, just bone dry out there. We haven't had any appreciable moisture on that fire site in about a month. And as you know, if you've been here for a while, we had bone dry conditions in November, December, throughout January, into February as well. And now we're into March. And Last night was the first time we saw any moisture in Colorado Springs in the past 12 days. Here's what the wind is going to do. And again, firefighters look forward to that wind dying down because that'll give them a chance to jump on that thing. Unfortunately, 430 is still very strong and gusty across our area. 530, no change in that pattern. We've got a real tight pressure gradient at the surface right now. And once we see the sunset, we're going to see uh, conditions really start to lighten up. This is 730 tonight. Basically, just a real light breeze. So firefighters will have a great chance to jump on that fire, get some content on that thing after sunset tonight and as we work through the nighttime hours it's going to be really calm across our area overnight tonight the wind is not going to be an issue even early tomorrow morning just real light breezes or else calm conditions on that fire site and for much of southeastern Colorado for that matter during the afternoon tomorrow we're going to start to see those winds ramp up just a little bit but certainly nothing close to the wind that we've got blowing out there right now I think peak winds tomorrow maybe around 20 to 25 miles per hour out of the south so that would push that fire due north all right I want to show you relative humidity. Firefighters also want to see that come up because that helps with the firefighting efforts. Still really dry around here late this afternoon. As we work into the nighttime hours, that uh, humidity naturally starting to come up just a little bit. This is going to be real good news. If you remember during Waldo, we had relative humidity in the single digits. Well, late tonight, we're going to see that relative humidity.
relative humidity rising to the upper 30s early tomorrow morning into the 50s and 60s. That's a very moist air mass, so that'll certainly help tremendously with fighting the fire by tomorrow afternoon. Still much wetter in the atmosphere than what we've got out there right now. We'll gradually start to dry out late tomorrow afternoon, but much better conditions tomorrow than what we've got out there right now. We've been showing you this. This is pretty interesting. There's where the fire is right now, and with those northwesterly winds, it's blowing that thing due southeast, and this is the smoke plume. This is pretty impressive. The fire west of I-25, it's blowing that smoke plume all the way out to Los Animas already. That's 85 miles away from that fire. Just strong, gusty wind. That's why we've got the big problems. We do have that red flag warning active until 7 o'clock tonight. We already made you aware there's another fire burning in El Paso County. Please stay away from anything that could spark a fire. As we've been telling you for the past few days, fires burn out of control very quickly under conditions like this. Yes, they will gradually get better after sunset tonight, but we've got at least four more hours to go before we see any improvement in these conditions. Temperatures right now on the warm side. If you were around during Waldo, we had temperatures in the 90s and 100s during that fire, so this is much better. Uh, we're at the peak of uh, the fire danger, though, uh, during this time of the day because it's the warmest time of the day. It's also the driest time of the day, and the winds are strongest right now. 56 in the spring, 65 is the current temperature in Pueblo. Here's a look at how much rain we've picked up, and this just came last night in Colorado Springs. That's the first measurable precipitation we've had in the past 20 days. In Pueblo, the last time you had any measurable moisture was in uh, mid to late February. And on the fire side itself, they haven't had any serious moisture in about a month now. So uh, tender, dry conditions all across the News 5 viewing area. We don't see any relief until about Sunday. I want to jump ahead and show you that hour by hour forecast. It'll be dry around here again tomorrow, but we've uh, got a nice little piece of energy coming our way. And finally, I think with, uh, this next storm is going to track far enough south across the Colorado New Mexico border that will actually have an upslope component around here. Most of the storms all winter long uh, have been tracking so far to the north we haven't had a chance to get any decent moisture around here, but this is a Sunday afternoon going to see snow showers across the higher elevations. Good snows up there, a couple of rain showers possible, and watch as we work into Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, going to see a nice little burst of moisture come over the Palmer Divide, northern El Paso County, moving eventually from north to south. So again, uh, there is hope on the horizon. We've got moisture in the forecast by Sunday, but uh, right now, guys, our, uh, our, our biggest fear is coming to fruition. We were on the air last night telling everybody that uh, if a fire should start today, it could burn out of control very quickly, and that's exactly what's going on right now. Yeah, sadly, uh, no relief here even in the next couple of hours, but at least there was a little bit of uh, positive news there, Mike, when you're talking about the uh, humidity levels rising at least somewhat here in the next 12 hours. Oh, it'll be gradually better as we work into the late afternoon into the evening, but we've got four more hours of very dangerous conditions here across the area, so folks just need to be cognizant of that fact. Stay away from anything that could possibly spark another fire. And again, firefighters looking forward to sunset tonight because the wind will die off. Also, humidity values will start to come up. Good news. Thanks, Mike. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can't stress enough what we've said previously about please be cognizant of any type of spark because right now we have so many agencies responding to this situation in Midway mm -hmm. that if we do obviously you know there are contingency plans for all local fire departments the size of Colorado Springs for right. example that they can dispatch crews to this fire and then have backups not only to handle emergencies around the community but also to handle other fires you mentioned uh, something has sparked there on the east side of the right. Springs Barnes and Peterson, Peterson.